That's we gotta blame yeah. Kev. <laughs> well, that they, uh, so hey, have we decided? I thought, I thought it. I thought it was twelve for a penny. You guys are saying it was thirteen. Well, you got a bonus one if you decided yeah. to pay for another one or something. There oh, was some like yeah. loophole: buy one get one free for two ninety nine extra. And you're like, sure, and then you fucking screw them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the timing is so good. That timing was the best we had so far. <laughs> To the lot hey guys how's it going right all right who's down we are. for an 89 show tonight Woo! holy shit right <laughs> i didn't tell you guys actually but uh i right before we came on live i made an announcement that the polls on tuesday nights are going to go out after the show i'm not going to release new matchups in the middle of an 89 show like no. or any fish show for that matter <laughs> like, like that's yeah. just crazy i'll be completely fixed on this one and and taking it in and it's avant-garde yeah (laughs) so so this this okay is that the mason and dixon one again (laughs) this show hasn't been seen before right like i mean like not by me i mean the guy who recorded i imagine saw it and like his friends but i think i swooned when they announced it oh did you swoon Kev, is this 89? Is that before you started seeing Fisher? December. It was December I saw him. So this was seven, eight months beforehand. Yes. Wow. Similar wow. set list. Noob. Yeah. They, they, <laughs> you know, the set list back then were a small pool. It was only Lawn Boy and Jonta and the covers they did and the game end shit, you know? I was kind of so. hoping we would see you in the crowd. <laughs> there's young there cab going nuts the guy hitting on the bartender there he is nah it's the guy, it's the guy in the radiator shirt did the main right. yeah. <laughs> i love uh, the yeah. venue name too the venue name is the universal joint at right. in northampton virginia the universal joint like that's you can't oh, that's, that's a, cool that's a pretty decent name yeah no it's amazing <laughs> did anybody peek at the set list yes no. I didn't. No, I didn't. I, I kind of did. don't want spoilers. I know we joke about that every week, but I kind of – this one's completely off my radar, right? Like the other – the 3.0 ones, I kind of know half of the set list. This one I have no idea, and I – I mean, no they only had a smaller for... discography, so you yeah. have some idea. But, I was going to but... say in 89, you can take an educated guess. Like, yeah. We're going yes. to we're gonna get a Bowie. There isn't going to be a stash. Are, are, are we going to get a Soul Planet? No. <laughs> no, we're not. Version. no, but you'll probably get some dead and like some cool covers too, right? Because oh. that was still in the phase when no, the they dead were... were the dead probably were gone by 85. I think when Paige joined is when they dropped the dead shit. Yeah. Yeah, I think I don't know. It might Thank be you. a titch after that, but it will be interesting to see if there is some covers that we, you know, don't you know i'm anymore. i'm gonna peek i'm gonna peek i don't it's, want to but i'm going to i i can't okay. help no it like spoilers when, then i'm not well, going to but not not now but like when the show starts like oh, every week i've yeah. like been like mm, what's coming next i'm curious you know the, the, this, the thing that was so fun about 89 88 all those early years is there's so much story and game hedge and they're still finding their way and trey's more than willing to talk for fucking 10 minutes whereas right. now you don't get that you know if, if anything, you get the weird harpoon with the Baker's dozen or something where they, you know. I mean, he chair. talked a lot during Alpine Night 3 right after that Ruby Waves. He did, yes. The whole wedding thing. That was cool as shit. That was fun. And actually, was this awesome. past New Year's Eve run with the 
the pan story that was a fairly long yeah that was <laughs> the sorry i know what you mean though it's show year <laughs> right it used to be every night though he always had something to say you went to see fish you got a story of some kind about something at that point the the yeah. weird thing was i think they were looser as a band like with their stage presence but they were tighter as a band you know like instrumentally wise and the music they made it's kind of weird like rally like now they're very kind of they're pretty tight with their stage persona you know every once in a while they bust out and do something kind of silly and talk a bunch but it's not consistent like kevin's saying but the the music on the flip side was very precise very you know it, it's an interesting dichotomy to me it's i don't know like... go ahead anybody else <laughs> yeah no i was gonna pretend like i knew what i was talking about and throw in an opinion that's completely unvalidated or founded but <laughs> i feel I like that. that's what we were all about to do like all, <laughs> yeah. all of us at once we're all I already did exactly that i, I, feel, I like... feel there was a transition like though you oh you're just gonna you're gonna you're gonna jump on that llama right you want you no, want to just keep keep spilling we'll just bullshit. butt heads let's go <laughs> now versus it's... walk So, uh, I, <laughs> all right, I wanted to see how long we, uh, no, I think they're, all right, Chad, let's go. Okay, so when I, I'm confused about what you're saying is tight, Matt. You're saying that like they're tighter musically now or they're tighter musically back then? No, he's but, saying musically tighter than and persona tighter now. But I was gonna argue that there was a, a build in the eighties until like maybe 92 of tightness because actually from what my limited experience with the 80s fishes there was a lot of slop like it was almost like made um real right because i listen to early 90s fish and they don't sound real like it doesn't sound like a real human band but like when they're like coming out of school and everything there were you know a little bit of slop to it i thought but again no, i think that's unfounded. a great no i don't th i think that's a great point i think where they 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 didn't stretch out in the sense like I don't think they took as many chances to fail in a sense early on you know like they really tried to and if they missed notes here and there that was a thing you know but they were still coming up they were still you know earning their wings you know in a sense like and and yeah so they were looser in a sense like the way they talk like Trey would just have a blast you could tell oh, that they yeah. were really having fun up there that was the other piece that sometimes is missing like you you know he's having fun he's smiling you know you can tell but as far as just like the bs and and, and you know that stuff's kind of gone uh, and back yeah. then they did all the jazz standards it was a train and caravan and donnelly which were tight songs and they were teaching themselves to do that kind of thing to be focused and to knock it out and that was the whole thing so hey llama i i kind of feel bad because as funny as it was i am curious what you were trying to say over top of what i was trying to say no i was just saying i think it's a natural progression of like all bands that you know i don't think it's a unique to fish that's a valuable because... point llama yeah that's I was going, I agree with that 100%. I was going to kind of pivot a little bit to Dead and Company because I've been watching these Dead and Company shows. That's a good idea. Well, no, no, but I, uh, hold on. It all, it all ties together though, because I've been watching these Dead and Company shows and, and we had the, you know, we've also been having these shakedown streams and like watching Old Dead versus like what they're trying to do now. I'm like, oh man, I get it. But okay, here's where I bring it back around is that I don't think they were tighter necessarily back then they were faster you they know what i'm saying faster. they were faster and now they've pulled a lot it back faster. a little bit you know so it's like it doesn't have that illusion of tightness anymore but they're i think they're tighter now that so was trey think, yeah trey says like in a couple of interviews that that pulling back of the speed was by design and i get it right like it's the musicality and the musicianship yeah. but how much of it do you think is also chops right like Definitely. I, I think there's a little bit of that, but I think also when you graduate to arenas and the sound is bouncing around a lot more, because I even noticed that, like, even in the, like, I think what you'll hear tonight in a small little club as opposed to what you'll hear in 99, tonight's going to be even faster. Like, they're yeah, gonna, I hope that'd be you, cool. Yeah, I mean, because it's just like when you get in, a, in an arena, you've got to pull it back a little bit because the sound's echoing and bouncing and, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, oh, there's a story that after they walked off from Fairly Well and Trey went up to Bobby, Bobby was not happy as how, at how fast Trey did fucking deal. He was like, that's not <laughs> how that song goes anymore. Really? <laughs> anymore. Yeah. <laughs> anymore. Anymore. I have a question. All right. Okay. 
in in the spirit of bands getting older and playing slower and becoming different than they were like when they were young which band do you think has aged the most gracefully hmm. Hmm. well the stones the stones yeah, I was just yeah. Say the stones. there's nothing graceful about keith richards He's still but alive. Man. The fact like that he's 900 the fact years that he's old. Alive. Yeah, it's like he's a vampire. Like, and I mean, still how much plays and keeps you know. going? You know, all right. those guys. Yeah. Yeah. What about, Macart- what about I mean, McCartney? We talked about McCartney. Yeah, Ronnie- yeah McCartney is. We talked about Ronnie Wood's hair, man. That guy's been rocking so long that that hairstyle has gone from fashionable to completely out of fashion to sort of back into fashion again, and yeah. it's never changed. T is absolutely correct. Yeah. That is the only correct answer. <laughs> I have to disagree with McCartney just because his backing band changes all the time. True. So okay. they're kind of giving him the energy. But in that vein, I would say Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band would fall. He, well, yeah. yeah. And Tom yeah. Petty was in there too before he passed away. I mean, he. Thank you, Travis. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, Tom's dead, so you know. <laughs> so he didn't age that gracefully. I mean, he. Well, until he, like, until he wasn't aging. He did anymore. until he did. Yeah, I mean, like he's. <laughs> Not really aging. He's decomposing. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. How, we got, how we got old the joke. Died. I don't know. Well, producer looked that up. Or we'll look that up. We don't have a producer 62? for this show. Oh, early sixties. Right. Yeah, early sixties. Okay. And whenever I look at him in my mind, he always looks like he's like thirty-seven. Bruce. Who? Yeah. Tom. Tom. Tom Petty. Tom oh, is yeah. ageless. Tom is ageless. Yeah. Tom is not actually decomposing currently. He actually looks exactly <laughs> like he looked. When he's he actually passed. getting young. He's actually he's getting a, younger. He's going to cut a new record. record. He, was, he, he chats. Was 66. Says Paul Simon. He was 66. Paul Simon's a good call. Yeah. Paul Simon, yeah. yeah. He also doesn't tour anymore, though. There comes Ryman Simon and Billy Joel. Yeah, I don't know about okay. gracefully. Yeah. I I saw Billy Joel a couple years ago. I would not know. Like compared to his Russian concert. So like, are we not allowed to say fish though? Because Trey is older now than Jerry was when he died. And we, you know, I think we're trying to I think we're trying to avoid, you know what I'm saying? Like I think Yeah, I know, know but honestly, I didn't want to say because it, it was the obvious answer, but as you're saying all of these other answers and we're like reaching, huh. I hey. realize how well fish is still doing like musically physically like they're killing it i mean it's not 89 but there's macrobiotic diets no seasoning on your burger and honestly it's the model of heroin that too and the model you know like the, the model of making the music the way they do keeps you fresh and keeps you you know like if you improvise and you yeah. you know that is something that you can do forever eventually people are not going to want to hear you know people kept giving me shit about my love of huey lewis and their probably <laughs> best point their best point was you know well what's huey doing now well there's there's answers for what's Huey doing now a little bit that are a little what more is huey doing but, now he has well, an he inner had ear problem he just made a he, new album he did he did Meniere's disease Yes. So I'm glad we're talking this, this switch to Huey, but, um, but the idea is though, is, is, would you say he, he is his artistic career aged gracefully? I don't know. You know, is he still packing the house? Is he packed? Is he, he was still doing, doing you films, know? film songs? He was doing, you know, soundtracks yeah, I'll for give, films. I'll give Huey a lot of credit. Oh, uh, please yeah, don't he, hear yeah. me as, don't He's hear me as of, like. Hall of Fame though. Right. He's Hall of Fame for sure. Oh my God, Huey. Don't get yeah. me started on Huey. I, okay. I don't, can't believe Let's I say, used him as a bad example. No, you got Huey. yourself started on Huey. I Nobody know. here what? is getting you started on Huey. You terrible. got yourself Huey, started uh, on it. Here's a funny thing. Oh. Huey is the same age as Bruce Springsteen. They're both 70 years old. And Tom Whoa. Petty was 66 when he passed away. Oh, wow. wow. Ah, Bruce is right 70? Ooh. And uh, who else? Who are you talking about? I already forgot. Huey. Oh, Huey. Lewis Huey. Is 70. Oh, how, 70 how old is Paul McCartney? 76. Okay. So in theory, Man. we still have like a good six years of Bruce if we can ever go more. And if he can ever tour again. And it's worth, if you've seven, never seen Bruce, it's Kev. a show to see. It is worth yeah. going to see Bruce. That's that's the last on my bucket list. Hey, so did any hey, of you guys, hey. Chad and Kev are excluded, so I guess the other three of you, any of you guys check out any of those Bracket Support Live episodes we were doing? Yeah, I watched two of them. All right, decent, no good. <laughs> Give me some notes. The first one was live. Just let me have it. I think we only did two. Did we do three? Oh yeah, I think you guys only did do two. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I mean, 
maybe and i talked a little bit with chad about this but definitely try to find like a second other person to come on with a contrasting view a little bit to live and yeah up. to create like, some like matt we don't all agree great. with each other yeah matt would have been great if he could have like ended his vacation he could have but he was on vacation. Yeah. He was trout yeah. fishing in America, man. He was trout fishing <laughs> exactly. in America. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you the exact note Lama. Well, I'm going to paraphrase the exact yeah. note Lama gave to me. The exact paraphrase, though. Uh, the exact paraphrase was show prep, bitch. No, you know, he, absolutely he was, not. Yeah, yeah, he was like, <laughs> you should have a list of things you're supposed to talk about. That way, when there's dead silence, you can jump to the list. And I was like, that's a really good note. Like, we should prepare. <laughs> Yeah, that's a wonderful note that we're absolutely not going to do. No, no, we wear sunglasses, man. We wear sunglasses. (laughs) And I was trying to throw you shit. I tried to throw you shit every time. I was. And I can't read it, producer. You're doing great. You did. You did. Maybe we should get rid of the sunglasses. (laughs) No, but I mean that's like a semi daily or or frequent. He has notes. Wait, wait. Llama has notes. I have notes. Didn't sunglasses, man. That just reminded me what we didn't do was announce the guests or or, or we announced yeah, I was we didn't say, say it at the top of the show. Who's coming oh. on tonight? It's an exciting episode. I'm glad you asked, Lama. Good transition. How exciting. It's you so know, exciting. I'm, I'm kind of past the whole trying to make this great. It's just fun. Let's like hang out and acknowledge our wook mediocrity, our wook rockerty. Uh, I feel like this is going to be the best Llama episode ever. I sure hope so. I need you, Llama. Uh, we got Stephen Hyden coming on first. That's insanely exciting. Uh, after Stephen, we have Greg Knight. Uh, he does PR for Goose, and also I think he does some music. I don't, I don't know a ton about that, but I want to, I want to ask him about that. Um, and then we have Don Jenkins, the host of Female Centrics on osiris what did i tell you guys every week we're gonna have an osiris podcast chad doesn't know he's chad's muted, muted and he is just playing the <laughs> shit out of that keyboard well, oh no i scored that so beautifully too it was- sure. <laughs> damn sure. It. sure damn it sure. oldest trick uh, in the book it's like uh, i left my wallet at home when you were at the bar somebody sure. could have said something like <laughs> anybody i was any talking point. i know anybody yeah. else i just noticed at the end I was like, I what are you doing down there? Over Tim. Oh, All right, so it sounded something like this. Oh. I, I do have a quick note for you, Tim. Okay. We have two people who have Osiris pods. Steven does the From the Vault, and season two starts back up in a couple weeks, I believe. The 36 From the Vault, right? Yeah, yeah. Product placement. Yeah, no, that, and I've, <laughs> I haven't no. actually gotten to that one yet, but I have heard tremendously good things. It's, and it's, the marketing and branding on it yeah. is awesome. Aesthetically, hey, it's just a very cool looking thing, too. You know, bringing this up now, I'll just get this out of the way. Uh, great wow. went. How many of the 36 from the vault have you heard? You mean the Dick's Picks things? Or? Yeah, yeah. Um, I have all of them. I knew it. <laughs> um, some of them I remember having tapes from when I was younger, so I've skipped them just because right. I've heard it, and there's only so much time left in my life, so I have to pick the <laughs> shit I've never heard before. I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot here really quick, and this is a tough question. Do you have a favorite? Uh, 1229.79. I think it was four or five. The, the shakedown Uncle John's encore when they busted Uncle John's back out and did the Uncle John's reprise. It's fucking, you know, right before Keith left. It was, you know, or no, I guess it was right after uh, Brent joined. Because he started more, playing in like April. It. Yeah, he started playing in April of that year. So, yeah, it was when Brent was new. But it was uh, that one just, I could listen to that one over and over. I've been really but, appreciating the dead a lot yeah. in the last couple of weeks. Like, I've kind of gone back um a little bit to like uh you know like uh just th- those old dick pics and the even the 36 from the vault a little bit like i've been going back to all those because i don't know for some reason my i guess maybe you know maybe it's quarantine maybe being stuck in this damn basement all day long but like the dead have just been so like nostalgic and like warming you know what i mean sure yeah. do you have a favorite dick's pick i don't oh wow uh, well, no, I, I have dick pics uh, that I take and regularly send to female. No, I shouldn't do that. No, no, no. Okay. Wow, we're live, Chad. 
Oh, unless shit. It's totally unless different. specifically asked, do not send dick pics. No, Chad I was literally just lit up. The light just I, went like. Bing. <laughs> and he, and he no, no, I, I was telling you guys before we went on the air, my favorite dick's pick. Oh, and, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I, so I have a picture. There's a picture floating around of me at Dick's at a fish show with a balloon that wrote, I love dicks on it. And my friends tossed it around Facebook. And a lot of my friends on Facebook aren't fish heads, so it had no context at all. Yeah. So there was a picture floating around on Facebook of me with a balloon that said, I love dicks. Oh, nice. Hey, yeah. hey, speaking of childhood and things from the past, uh, did you know that our first guest is a Brewers fan just like you? I did know that. Oh, the nice. Brewers nice. fan. The oh, I'm ready to go. Who, I'm ready to go. Who, blow it. who is that? I'm, bring it out. Bring it out, man. Well, uh, no, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Oh, for, uh, okay. I'm waiting for him. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Uh oh. Hey, we're trying to blast us out. Baseball man had the fever and had it bad. Just to root for the hometown through every two. Katie Blue. You're not supposed to stop though. It's supposed to be behind you. Yeah. You know. You know what's funny is that it was because my Wi-Fi was down for a week that Wook discovered that he can do audio now too. <laughs> he did not know that before we started doing the uh, the I mean, bracket support. Yeah, we, we now, can all do audio. Yeah, apparently. The chat says that Boston Gardens dicks pick is their favorite. I don't know what number that is though. Oh, okay. Yeah. I like the uh, Binghamton one, Volume Eight at Harper College. That's a good one. All right. Um, wait, was Cornell a, a dick's pick? Uh, I don't think so. I think it was released independently. Oh, as, okay. You know, another imprint yeah, off the a, dead label. It was yeah. a big uh, record release. That they have, oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway. Have we circled back around to saying that's your favorite show, live show? It's acceptable now. That Cornell. that show never happened. <laughs> it was a CIA thing. Wow. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. I've completely Kubrick, lost. Kubrick directed now. it on a soundstage. There is a conspiracy happened. theory, Tim. There's a conspiracy theory that the Cornell '77 Dead Show never really happened, and it was all CIA mind control to get people to follow the Grateful Dead. Oh, why? Why would this work? Follow the Grateful Dead. <laughs> Because I don't know. I can answer that. I can answer that. So they would get okay. all the druggies in one place and make all the marijuana arrests. Yeah. Boom. That's how they did it to you, man. Yeah. Oh, volume 17, the chat says, is the Boston Gardens one. So. Okay. What was right. that Mel Gibson movie? Which one? What one, one about conspiracies. That's a callback. Oh, the one. Conspiracy <laughs> theory. <laughs> This episode is going so well right So now. bad. Yeah, we can talk about what's turning we, into it, though. I don't care. Did like, we decide not about... to talk about the show? Did we decide that we weren't going to talk about the set list of the show? Is that right. what nah, I don't think we talk about the set list surprised. of the show. We're going to be surprised. Man. We could we could talk about what's come the bands in the bracket that are getting released when the bracket. I tell you, the bracket. I tell you what, Trav Travis, you can give us clues, like along the well, way. I'm giving you a clue right now with my background. I've been waiting forever to break out this shirt because they haven't played it yet. Captain Tab. Oh, very Tab. nice. Finally, oh, tonight we get a little. Little. We get a little. Oh, is, is, that's good. That's 89 a lost right background. I'm hanging out, a... Exactly. I'm hanging out in the hatch. Nice. Desmond. I nice. thought that was the Death Star for a second. Nah. -uh. Well, kind of. Oh, man, I got the numbers right up there. Right up there. Who's going to be fun? It's going to be a fun together. show. It is I mean, how could show. it not? It's a good, you know, good you know what? Like, my, I was so happy with like fish fans on Twitter that didn't complain that it was only one set. Like for the most part, like most people were like, "We're set." Wasn't like we're set one. Fish has done, so, <laughs> done so much, giving us all these movies. I mean, yeah. it's what week nine or ten for them. It's week nine for us. I mean, we jumped on uh, early with that, but. No, oh, they had, free music. I think they had a couple before us. What's up, Llama? What's up? Lee? I'm assuming so, you're trying to get our attention and not just yes, yes, having yes, a yes. wrist spasm. Yes, yes. Yeah, my wrist spasm goes in a different direction. Uh, Greg Knight from the chat says, let's discuss my dad being a student at Cornell in 77 and what he told me about why he didn't go to the show. <sighs> So it sounds like there's a story there. 
Oh, well, I wait, know what we're talking about. <laughs> I know so Greg Knight is in our second guest, Greg Knight, who's watching the show. Oh, like, man, nice. what did I agree nice, to do? Nice. Very nice. That's nice, great. nice. So, so let's, uh, yeah, yeah let's, let's, let's keep try that to remember uh, that. Yes, that'll be on the back burner. That's a great thing. Oh, front good, thing good thing I made All right, it. Well, I think that actually was a great idea, Matt. Let's, um, I want to do a lightning round super fast. Just tell me who you're picking out of these matchups. I'll call your name, right? Coming up. There's four matchups that go live tonight. Are you guys cool oh, with that? Yeah. yeah. And you don't have to say lightning round and super fast. That's redundant. Lightning oh, round boy. is super fast. That's all I'm saying. It's okay. Irregardless. Let's go. All right. <laughs> I hate Thank all you, of Chad. <laughs> all right. Um, Jane's Addiction versus Foo Fighters. Matt. He wasn't ready. I'll what? just do this visually. I'll do this visually. Jane's Addiction? Cool. Okay. Chad? Foo. Trav? Jane's. Kev? Foo. Wow, that's really... We didn't rehearse it, but I... Llama? Jane's Addiction. And I also am Jane's Addiction. Uh, public Second Enemy table. versus Nine Inch Nails. Matt? Public enemy. <laughs> Chad. P E. Uh T. God, this is so hard because Trent Reznor is just a genius, but I, I I gotta go public enemy. Wow. Well, obviously Kev's public enemy. What about you? <laughs> yeah, no, no, I wanted Kev to say nine inch nails so bad <laughs> just then. Like, you know, I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna have to right go public there. enemy as well. Oh wow. Oh, I uh, I abstain. <laughs> I think I actually lean nine inch nails. That's fair. That's it's very, very That's minor leaning towards, but one. right. I mean, uh, yeah. Wait, we got two more to go, right? Yeah, Just, real quick. Man, this is real wonderful. quick lightning round, opposed oh. to the real slow lightning round. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, doors, red hot chili peppers. Matt, uh, peppers, Chad, doors. T, doors. Kev, Lizard King. Llama? The doors. Yeah. I'm doors. Wait, wait. And the last is the uh, pig. No, no, we can't move on from this. Hold on. Am I the okay. only red hot chili pepper guy? You yep. are. Yep. 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 Y'all are wrong. Yep. So let's let's yep. gumbo this yep. thing. Here's the deal. Yep. Listen, the 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 lizard king, Kev, come on, stop with that. That dude's a joke. Number one. Number two, I started digging into the chili peppers. You start digging into their like catalog and their albums. It's just like one massive album hit after another. Like it, Red Hots are no joke, man. Come on. No, they're on the they're on the bracket. I mean, they're no joke. They, they like losing it. to yeah, the, doors in the top makes 64. them a joke. If you lose to a joke band, then you that that kind of yeah. makes whoa, you a joke. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. You know what? Whoa. Whoa. Here's the problem. Here's the problem is that Red Hot Chip Chili Peppers don't have Raymond's Eric. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, now, just go, please. take the lyrics and take Jim Morrison out of it, and the Doors are still a great band. Oh, exactly. Do you guys want to answer all... the last question? Yes. 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 <laughs> Pix Pixies, the Pixies versus Weezer. Matt. I can't read your damn sign, Matt. Pixies. The Pixies. Pixies. <laughs> Chad. Pixies. T. Weezer. Kevin. Pixies. Llama. Weezer. Ooh, I'm with the Pixies. And with that, I welcome our first <laughs> guest of the night. Somebody who has way better musical opinions than we do. Right, let's see how I can do this. Born in Appleton, Wisconsin, he is America's preeminent music critic, author of four books, and host of 36 from the Vault on Osiris, the only guy listening to Gang of Use while watching Golden Girls, it's Stephen Hyden. So smooth. He's so smooth. Oh, he's connecting to audio. You should have just kept vamping. Oh, there he I is. I can't keep. All right. Hey, Steve. Welcome. How's it going? Oh, uh -oh. Still connecting to audio. There we go. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> All right, there we got him. Hey, buddy. Hey, how's it going? Ooh, great. Awesome. Oh, I like that. Thank you. Thank you for the plug. <laughs> yeah, we it. have. We were talking about a little bit before uh, big fans of everything you're doing or and have done. But uh, we, we definitely wanted to talk about the podcast um, and maybe a little bit about what we were just talking about, the brackets. But first, how's yeah. everything going? How you been? It's, it's going it's going well i'm excited for the show tonight i've been uh listening to 89 fish which i usually don't go back that far i, I only typically go to like 93 maybe 92. So, so what's your take on 89 how do you feel about 89 as a year well i mean just listening to a bunch of shows like the last few days it's really amazing to me like how unique an unusual fish was in 1989. Like you think about like what else was happening in the music world and in the rock world. Yeah. And to see point. a band like that playing in a club is, it, it just seems so strange. I mean, like in a way, like fish's music is so epic that to see them in an arena or even a stadium, it, it makes sense to see them in that place. But like, just imagine like, it, cause like in 89, they're playing like in zoos and like frat houses <laughs> and like in basements, you know, yeah, just this, see a this, band like that. This venue is the universal joint. Like, I don't right. even know what, yeah. what, the, what is that? It, it I don't was, even know what a universal joint is. It was all hanging out at the bar, talking with people. It was like any other band on a Sunday night that you would pay your seven bucks well. to go see back then. I know, but any like, other band that had Trey Anastasio. Well, but, but <laughs> I'm saying that the, the feel inside the club was half the people there were people who'd never even heard of them. It was something to do on a Sunday night, and the other half uh, kind of knew who they were. There were no religious devotees who hung on every note there, you know? It just kind of blows my mind that, like, you know, you walk into a club, and normally you, you go to a club and a band is playing conventional songs or maybe they're playing covers. To walk in a club and hear a band doing, you know, uh you know divided sky or doing <laughs> you enjoy myself these yeah. songs that aren't really even songs they're sort of like bits of songs that are being taken in different directions it's very proggy you know and just thinking about like what else was going on in music at that time you know like they didn't sign anything like the replacements or, T or dinosaur jr or sonic youth like the other big sort of american indie rock bands that were going on at that time it's just so unusual to think of them in these environments in 89 so it's really i'm excited to see this video uh because it, even though i don't think that they were totally where they were gonna what they were gonna become like in the 90s that embryonic state that they're in at that time it's it's so interesting just to think of them at that stage yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i think it's gonna be fascinating to see that you know through the video because it's one thing i even with like the what was it 95 was the La the earliest show so far even that seeing a video because i've heard it a bunch of times but seeing it the video of it was surreal and this is six years before that so i'm really looking forward to it it's funny like because you know i remember the first fish album i ever heard like live album and it's such a weird introduction to them it was colorado 88 you know which is like not an album you'd recommend to anyone like oh this is this should be your entry you know, entree into fish but I, I got a promo record of that in like the mid 2000s. It was probably like 06 or something. I remember really liking it. I love the song Fluffhead. That was the first song I really responded to from that record. Um, but I don't know. It's just funny that that was my introduction because obviously that's such an early stage of the band and it really doesn't really begin to suggest what they're going to become by like, you know, the mid 90s and then, you know, on forward. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I just feel like they were so, um, unique at that time and yeah, like, it, did you see them back then? That's what I was about Kev to ask did. you. Yes. Yeah, I did. I, what, the first time yeah. show I saw was December of 89 at the eight wow. by 10 in Baltimore. So you said that people were just kind of going for a show. So like, there wasn't any like, because because they weren't like the Grateful Dead even. I mean, they were much different from the Grateful Dead. I, I had never even heard of them. Guy called me up and told me an Allman Brothers cover band was playing and asked if I wanted to go see them and it was Fish. <laughs> and when, when we walked in, they were playing You Enjoy Myself. Yeah. Did they, cover, I, any, did they cover any almonds? 
No, but the second time I saw him there at the 8x10, they did Jessica for a sound check. <laughs> okay. I imagine that a lot of people go to the shows with that in mind, right? Like, oh, it's just another band. But I, I would have to imagine after you see them in that setting one time, the cult you know drinking the kool-aid happens pretty quickly i'd imagine well, it, it i mean took, like it, to it see took, yam in a bar is insane it, it took it took me till probably the next year when they started playing the bayou every couple months and i started going to the bayou shows and the the when they played the bayou i went down i went up to the chestnut cabaret which was the next night up in pennsylvania and that was the first time i saw them two nights in a row and it kind of built from there you know when they did the bayou the next time it was the jade elephant and tracks i think that i went to it was three nights in a row so yeah, like when i listen to those old you know recordings like from 89 or 88 i mean i think you can obviously connect with the energy in the musicianship of the band i mean i think that's probably like what people latched on to when they heard them at that time but just in terms of like the songs and everything i mean like it wasn't a conventional band it wasn't like a band that you could say like well this is like this or right. it's like that yeah. you know hard to it was describe so... it with the genre or something what was, yeah, uh, I, I, I could I could see people just being like, "What the hell is this?" You know, like when <laughs> they first saw it, especially like because I know like on relisten, it was like around the time of the show that they're showing tonight. Like they literally do play in a zoo. It's like a it's like a zoo gig. So like just you're taking your kids to the zoo, and there's and then fish. <laughs> there's fish playing. You enjoy myself. Like what the hell were they thinking? You know, like what like what were parents <laughs> thinking? Like when this band was. You know, like when they're doing like the you know like the vocal improvisation, yeah, at the end. Right. it's like this is like, it was like you know, monkeys and zebras all yeah. around. Don't get, too, don't get too close, kids. Don't get too close. Get back. Let's get back. It's like a like a religious cult, you know, bringing on the apocalypse or something. You know, um, so I I don't know. It, it, in a way, it kind of even deepens my admiration of the band because I think you know they're such an institution now. You know, you can go see them at Madison Square Garden and it makes sense. Like we all understand like why this band is great, but when they were so new and they were introducing this music that is, again, like, I feel like in a lot of ways was, they were drawn from so many different areas and I, I can't really think of a band in 1989 that I would liken them to, you know? Sure. Well, I, you know Steve, what I mean? I wanted to jump in because I was gonna ask you, you mentioned the replacements, like where were where were you in 1989, like music wise? Like what was your, what was your jam in 89? Well, I was 12 years old, so I was into like Millie Vanilli. I love yeah. Paul Abdul. Paul, I mean, I, yeah. it was That's like legit. the beginning. Yeah, it was like the beginning of my musical education. I mean, it's interesting because like that was around the time because like you know I was like any kid at that age. I was just listening to what was on the radio, and right. that's obviously a much different time than we have now. You don't have the internet where you can access any kind of music. You're kind of back then it was like whatever was on mtv or the radio if you were a kid that's as especially like i grew up in wisconsin so there wasn't a whole lot of like extra college radio or whatever they were so oh yeah look at that are you from hey i'm from wisconsin two rivers are you yeah two rivers? okay yeah. yeah from appleton okay right yeah, on yeah yeah, yeah. Well, whatever yeah, robin were... you out look at that yeah no, we brought him to for you, you baby the kid. You listen to your intro we'll share your intro with you if you oh, didn't yeah. get to hear it though we okay. in appleton yeah okay Who's that? Oh, I can't see. Oh, that's Brian Clutterbuck. Out. That's Brian Clutterbuck. What was his record? <laughs> yeah. What was his record? Two and four with a four oh six ERA. He was two and six with a four two one I career. Go really deep into the was really deep into the Wisconsin sports talk for one sec. Like my uh, please. I think my sixth grade music teacher. Her her uh, like uh, I think it, it must have been like her daughter married Chris Basio. Do you remember Chris nice. Basio? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Late oh, yeah. 80s. Yeah. <laughs> everyone that was watching this just turned off. Like, everyone, <laughs> like, you're talking about fish. You're talking about no, Chris Basio. The, but, what? yeah, so, like, so anyway, yeah, I was listening to, like, pop music. But I was starting, you know, like, as I entered, like, my early teen years, I was starting to, to listen to, like, classic rock stuff. So I was starting to get into, like, pink. I remember, like, for my 13 uh my 13th birthday i got buds up when four i got dark side of the moon on cassette like those two albums which were hey totally we were having huge. a discussion earlier in the thread about did you ever do the columbia house thing steven oh yeah do you remember uh, any of the first uh 12 or 13 albums you got 
happen to remember. I mean, I think, no, I don't remember that. I don't yeah, remember that. that. Yeah, we had a hard time too. We were like, we were like, <laughs> you, oh, I, you think I came up with Anita Baker rapture, man. That's Come on. true. Yep. Yeah. Did you fulfill it's probably like commitment? bad motor finger or something like that? You know, yeah. I mean, because, you know, and back then it was cool because in the 90s, you know, and this has totally shaped me as an adult music fan that you had, I, had, I was on these parallel tracks where I was discovering older music from like 20 and 30 years earlier and then also really into like the alternative rock and music of the 90s but like those 90s bands would always reference older music you know like Pearl Jam played with Neil Young and Neil and Nirvana covered David Bowie songs and you know I wasn't a Fish fan at that time and I, I'm really sad about that because I think Fish <laughs> and I've written about this I think they were like a postmodern classic rock band I feel yeah. like they they took the classic rock influences and unlike a lot of bands they didn't just sort of slavishly recreate classic rock records they sort of like put their own spin on it and they were really reverent but they were also irreverent at the same time where you know uh they could cover classic rock songs in a sort of an earnest way but in a way you also felt like they're being a little subversive with how they're covering some of these songs at the yeah. same time yeah, and i always yeah. thought that and I, that's one of the things i really love about them it's like how I got into them, like through that conduit, is what really got me into fish. Right on, man. Right on. That's awesome. Hey, Llama. Yeah. Uh, Llama's been gushing all week. He's got kind of a man crush on you. I know. All week. <laughs> I, told, oh, I yeah, know yeah. some of the guys that you were coming he's, on, and Llama's like, all right. I got yeah. questions. I got questions. He's like, and you he come on. To, like, he wants Hit to me. go to. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah he was busted, talking. I didn't want to interrupt him. No, you did great. You yeah, did yeah. great sitting out. Like, you were yeah. so patient, and I'm so but proud of you. Now it's time to get in, buddy. But I want to give all you right, this yeah, moment. Yeah. Right First, I thought you were wearing a goose t shirt, but it says moose. Oh, yeah. This is their April Fool shirt. All right. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. So, so it is a goose shirt. It is. Oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah. That was the yeah. last show I saw of 2020. I saw them at the Troubadour oh, really? in Los Angeles in February. Oh, nice. Oh, and awesome. what did you think? I loved it. I thought they were great. And, yeah. you know, they're a band that, um, you know, I've enjoyed listening to their, uh, you know, their tapes and everything, like their live shit, I think is really good. And it's just a bummer because it seemed like 2020 was going to be a really big year for them. And yeah, yeah. now they're not. It's going to be really interesting. You know, presumably we're going to have live music again, you know, hopefully the not too distant future. There's so many different trajectories of bands that like, you know, like where are they going to be? And I've heard people talk about Fish. Is it going to be 4.0 Fish when they come back? <laughs> you know, but Goose was a band like, oh, they seem like they're really on a roll and now they can't tour and, um, Hopefully they'll be able to pick up where they left off. And I think that bingo tour thing they're doing is helping. Yeah, that's really creative. I I love that they're doing that. And yeah, I don't know. It's I I cheer for them. I you know it's really fun to have a jam band in their twenties. <laughs> you know, that's exciting. It's like so many yeah. of the best jam. You know, it's like you know you got to be in your forties or fifties. It seems like the the top people anyway. I mean, there's like other bands kind of floating around, but um, to see an up and coming group like that they're young and they got a lot of that energy yeah. and yeah th that's that's cool to see did you the goose. did you see we had someone from goose inc as the second guest their pr guy is our greg. second guest yeah greg yeah, yeah I've, I've talked with him a little bit awesome yeah me too he's, he's a uh, very he, cool guy i'm looking forward to he was just to asking us on the uh, chat how you got your tickets to the goose show Dude, we were on a list i was on a list <laughs> i got it in we got him there you go <laughs> I wonder what Greg might have been there actually. I'm thinking he's a uh, he's implying that he got you the ticket. Yeah, he did. Okay, Greg yeah, okay. did. <laughs> that's what he's implying. Yes, that's what he's implying on the chat. I think he was there. He might have been there. I don't remember. He might have been there. Greg, I'm sorry if you were there. No, no disrespect. I because I, I know the manager was there. There were a couple. There was there were many goose luminaries in the house. And how great a venue show. is the Troubadour to see that? That's, you know that was I my love that venue. That was my first time there, oh, really? and it was it was so cool. Um, and it's really bright behind me. I could should I close that quick? Am I like should I close the shade behind me? 
You know, wait till we have our next. Wait, wait till we have our next guest okay. on. Then you can take a little break. It I'm looks like, like the, whole, the whole thing's gonna angelic. fall apart. It looks you like do. I'm talking. I know it's gonna say I'm talking to you beyond the from the afterlife. Right? <laughs> Man, I'll, t- I'll take I, uh... I'll, t- I'll take my towel down if it, you want you want a match or something like that. Well... I can take that thing down and. No, know. I actually I, I got hit by a car before this call, so like this is the ghost. Oh, oh no! Oh, that's this, so... this is the ghost of me talking to you guys right now. Oh, well, um... I'm so glad we got this chance, man. That's so special. <laughs> no, that's yeah, so I special. I mean, I'm and I'm obviously such a a rock nerd. So just being in the Troubadour was was amazing because I and L.A. rock too. That whole L.A. rock scene and like the '70s. That's like such my Boy. you know sweet spot. So you had to be at the Troubadour, and hopefully the Troubadour. You know, that's Provides. one of the many mu- great music yeah. venues that is under you know is under siege right now because of yeah. of COVID. So hopefully they'll be able to pull yeah. through and host more shows. Uh, you know, once it's all over, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, all right, Lama, here's your chance. Go. I was gonna say, um, I had a question about your uh, when you were writing with Steve Gorman with from the yeah, book. yes. Um, what were your thoughts when he was telling you the story about Rich and uh, Jimmy Page in the guitar conversation? Oh, man. How much of it do you believe? So I believe it all. Believes. I mean, I, I, I believe it know? all. I mean. Oh, absolutely. I think Steve is a no bullshit guy. And whereas I think Chris, I mean, look, I'm, ob- I'm biased. Yeah, 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 yeah. Steve is my friend. I've known Steve for a long time, but I, I, I will say about Steve that he is a very down to earth, regular guy. Like if you were to talk to him, he could be on this call and you would forget that he had any connections to anything inter- you know, extraordinary right. within two minutes. Like the he's Black Crows, Hold on. The Black Crows Chad, the drummer from Black Crows. We're okay, talking thank about you. a Black oh, Crows yeah. story. <laughs> I, 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 I right. was, but, but I was oh. going to say for our audience that doesn't sure. know the story. No, yes. you know, uh, yeah. Steve and I wrote a book. To, well, well, yeah, Steve wrote a book called Hard to Handle. Mm-hmm. Steve Gorman is the drummer of the Black Crows. He's like one of the founding members of the Black Crows. No matter what you hear about Black Crows exactly. tours, if they don't have Steve Gorman, it, it's it's not Black Crows. Well, Ooh. exactly. I mean, look, people can disagree on that. I think right. for me personally, it, look, that tour is obviously canceled. I was going to go to that just because I, I want to hear those songs. But like, to me, the Black Crows are Chris Robinson, Rich Robinson, Johnny Colt, Steve Gorman, and Mark Ford. Like that, like that line. And uh, Fast um, Eddie, or and, Crazy and Eddie. Eddie. Crazy Eddie, Eddie, Eddie if he was alive. Eddie Harsh. Uh, can't R. forget R. Can't Eddie, forget Eddie Harsh. My boy, um, Eddie. Yeah, uh, sadly, I know. Florida I know Eddie us, from but, Detroit. Oh yeah. Yeah. I never met Eddie. He seems like a incredible oh, dude. We were running he around. Was. I was. I'm a keyboard player, and we were running. Oh, are around, you? And we were running around in Detroit drink. around the same time. Oh, oh man. Yeah, sorry, drink. <laughs> Fuck, you mentioned right. keyboards, so we have to drink, Stephen. If you got one. Oh. <laughs> hey, there you I've, go. I've got a couple. Real. Sorry. <laughs> so um, it's a two like, and no, a half I, hour show, man. No. I, no, I, <laughs> It's just amazing. Like I believe it because it also just seems in character, like with um, Rich and Chris, like how they would. But how react. can somebody be that dumb? Like you could, you could say that at about twenty thousand points in that book. I mean, I think right. there's like <laughs> this is the one point where like I threw down my Kindle and was like, "There's no way this is real." Like nobody would turn down a chance to, to report with Jim Page. I mean, like, I think that from their perspective they looked at it eventually as like we're tired of backing this guy up and they were maybe burned out by it at that point even though if you look at their history black crows were at a very low ebb when they started that tour with jimmy page and the jimmy page tour really kind of made people excited about the black crows again that's yeah that's what got me into them it's like oh they're such a great rock and roll band and uh i don't know i mean it it's it i'll tell you something about that book is that like when we turned it in uh the initial uh draft was two hundred and fifty thousand words which just just to put that in perspective the the book that was published is about 128 or so 128 thousand words so it's about half as long i mean like war and peace was not as long as like the original <laughs> draft of that book and yeah. um just because steve felt and i told him like this is there's no way they're going to accept this and he's like <laughs> I, I i just have to get all this stuff out i mean i think for steve there really was sort of like an exorcism like process 
for him and writing that book because there was so much trauma that he had gone through i mean right. i don't know if you remember that there's a part in the book where he talks about how he was in te- he was uh, going to al-anon meetings which al-anon is a uh it's an oh. offshoot of aa where it's for the the the, the family members of alcoholics mm-hmm. right to yeah. like kind of go through their own sort of like troubles yeah. that they've going because yeah. there's always these like sort yeah. of um mm-hmm. what's the word uh 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 collateral or i'm trying to think of the this <laughs> type of my brain like where, where you have like uh like enabling relationships right like, where right, you, right. you have codependent person, codependent codependent, codependent yeah. yes oh, like yeah. where you have someone well done, who, Chad. thank yeah. you someone who's always screwing up and the other person who's cleaning up the mess right it's like was, my relationship with book plus wow and that was wow. steve that was steve with with chris certainly from mm-hmm. the time they really met in 1987 and um and for him to kind of get to the point where like i don't need to be around this all the you know hey steve do you, have, do you ever it was really hard do you ever plan on publishing the other 125,000 words of that story? <laughs> Steve and I have joked about that. I mean, it's obviously Steve's call. Right. I mean, he I mean, he could write Part another two. book. Yeah, I mean. That could go like as a Rivals podcast, right? As, right. As, as, <laughs> or something. Well, my my mean, question. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, there's so many crazy stories from that band where it wasn't a matter of making it interesting. It was like, well, what's the right crazy story to illustrate the larger point <laughs> that we're trying to make? I mean, he, but he has, he has countless stories about them just being insane and derailing their progress that they had. Cause they were, they were honestly yeah. one of the biggest bands in the world for maybe two or three years. And people forget that now they because both the Robinson from, brothers. Uh, they both suffered from only child syndrome, even though they were brothers. Well, yeah, maybe. I mean, and I mean, Chris obviously had a lot of, and still has, I think, you know, drug dependency issues, alcoholism issues, um, mental. There's mental, obviously, mental uh, health issues there. He should, he should come on the uh, lot. He'd be perfect. He would. I mean, <laughs> the thing with Chris Robinson is in. It's so funny because people have, you know, they talk about that book and they're like, you know, I love the Black Crows. I don't know if I want to read that book because I don't want to ruin the music. It's like, I know way more than any Black, like there's there's shit in that book that like Steve couldn't put in there because it was like too dark. Like as dark as that book is, he didn't want to put it in. But it's like, I still listen to Black Crows bootlegs. Of course, that's rock and roll. That's rock and roll, man. Like I can't, that's the, that's again, what makes rock and roll, right? Is is the dark stuff with the light. Like, right. Kid that that would turn you off from a band weird shit and drama that's happening well you must not like any band then <laughs> well and like and that band isn't predicated on them being best friends like we all know that they don't get along like to kind of bring it back to fish it's like if i read a book that said that those four guys hated each other it actually would make me feel sad because i feel like with fish one of the things I love about them is that I feel like when they're really in sync, you're hearing the sound of their friendship. Like I, I, like a lot of bands, like I'm pretty cynical about bands. I feel like most bands, especially as they approach middle age, aren't really friends anymore. Like I don't really like assume that Mick and Keith and the stones are friends, you know, or like in the dead, like I know Bob and Phil don't really get along. That was my question. When's the rivals, Bob and Phil. uh, (laughs) we'll see that. we'll see uh I'm, i try to keep the dead and the rivals thing separate it's like i do so much dead right. stuff. it's like the dead but anyway um but like with the black crows it's like well from the beginning you knew that they didn't like each other so it doesn't really ruin it it made it like, better maybe it made them better like they they put yeah. each other in some ways that was like rich was always trying to one-up chris and rich was like hey i'm like here and i'm as big a part of this band as chris ever was so hello right Really well, I know, out, you know, like when I talk to Steve, he's always like, man, we're doing these like when we were doing those European tours in 1997, like early 97, that was so bleak and I hated it. And I'm like, that's my favorite bootlegs, man. I love that. I love because yeah, it's wow. like you, you can hear the darkness. That's 2.0 for me. That's fish yeah. 2.0 for me. Well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and that's, you know, like my friend. Uh, Rob Mitchum, who I do 36 from the vault with, he's still very sort of resistant to 2.0. And I think because he doesn't, 
and I'm not going to speak for Rob, but like my feeling is that maybe he doesn't like the darkness of it. He doesn't right. like the discord. Whereas I am a, like, I love rock and roll discord. <laughs> so I'm, I'm fascinated. And along with the many great, genuinely great moments that they have at that time, you know, just knowing that like Trey wasn't in the best health at that time, let's just say, and like how that fuels the darkness of some of those shows. Like it's, I hate to say it, it draws me in. Like I, I do like that about that. A period. lot of drama to those shows, and there I, I come to appreciate the writing of that time too. Round Room and Undermine, like yeah, didn't like it yeah. as much at the time, but some Round of those Room is a really songs, good record. The, well, now it's one of my favorites, but at the time I wasn't huge on it. But I, it's wait, definitely grown on me. I definitely think it's like one of the best sounding. Like the grittiness of that record is, I yeah. really like it. And like the title track, like how it's obviously recorded live and like how there's like screw ups in it and stuff. You know, like I love Neil Young in the 70s, like those 70s ditch records. And it's like, that's Fish's ditch record, you know, like yeah. grimy. Yeah. It's like, t- that's like their Tonight's the Night type record. And, and I appreciate oh, that. There you go. There you Bring go. Springsteen's Nebraska. Has yeah, a, exactly. That's a, good, that's a good comparison. Yeah. It's like, but even like Bruce never got like Bruce was was never like a drinker. You know, he was or drugger. You know, like it wasn't as right. You know, like with Neil Dark. at that time. Neil at that time, you know, doing tequila and you know the the honey slides. You know, like the honey slides. Like with I think it's like the where you you, you put honey and weed in a pan and then like you uh, smoke it or something. I'm sh- uh, that, that's the famous that, thing. I'll be damned. That's, a, that's, that's like a new. That's, that's like a new. That's a Neil Young thing from like the mid seventies. There's actually. I was like gonna a, say a that recipe. sounds. That sounds like Kuroda's recipe next week for dinner in a movie. Like, <laughs> trying to toss it over to him. Like weed, honey, pan. Put a little oil in there. Let's do this. Do you know that fish show so, from? There's like a fish show from like Amsterdam in 1996 uh, where. It's like considered the worst fish show of all time because like they're so fucked up when they play it. Oh, no. Have you, Is that the riding you know the worm one where they're riding the worm? They talk about that story. Yeah, some weird. It's something like that. Because like yeah. obviously there's the Amsterdam box set from 97, which for me is like peak fish or yeah, one of the peaks really, of fish. Yeah, really, but there's like a show from 96, like, and I think it's July or something. <laughs> and I heard it described because I downloaded it because I heard it described on some blog as like the worst fish show ever. <laughs> but just because it's so sloppy and they're obviously just had way over imbibed <laughs> before the show and it's I mean, pretty Amsterdam, fun. Exactly. Be the best. <laughs> yeah. If you wrote that blog, please uh, write into the show and uh, comment in the chat room. <laughs> right. and, uh, you know, Don't confront... we have a producer that can look that up? I know. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's the show they did that they wrote Karini afterwards because Karini appeared because of something that happened in uh, um, Amsterdam one time. Karini was, was your, based on was that uh, your phone. I'm sorry. Was that your yes, phone? That was my daughter calling. My sweet what is one your is my ring daughter's tone? ringtone. I'm sorry. What, what is it? My daughter's my, ringtone my is my one. sweet one. Oh, you call yourself a fan. Uh, you, you couldn't no, tell couldn't the song from a second of a ringtone yeah, over, over Zoom. <laughs> Good point. Oh, damn. I lost the game. That is weak. We uh, we we can't let you go, Stephen. You know, or we I know we we got a long show, but I I want to so, talk Radiohead with you a little bit. Yeah, I hang, I, I, I'm hanging in for a while. So fantastic, please hang out. But like, so so your Radiohead book's coming out. This yeah. isn't happening. Like I, I, again, it's a kid A focused book, right? Like Radiohead for me is amazing. Like first, like where do you put kid A in like? in the Radiohead echelon, like where would you put it album wise? And then can yeah. you can you disappear completely nowadays? <laughs> I'm just curious, like if that's possible, because every well, time I hear that song, like this, the, you know, how to disappear completely, I'm like, that's impossible. And I remember Jason Isbell's got a, you know, a quote about like, you know, something about, you know, seems like these days you can't disappear at all. You know, like how do you right, disappear? Right. Yeah, sorry, Radiohead, well, where do you put Kid A? Tell me all about Radiohead and then how do yeah. you disappear? <laughs> well, I'll just say, like, the book, it's talking about Kid A, but it actually ends up talking about Radiohead's all, like, their entire career. So, like, it talks about, like, the build awesome. up to Kid A, and then also talks about how they sort of carried on after that album and, and Amnesiac and, you know, the double shot of those two. So, it's like, so it is sort of like about the whole history of the band and also just kind of like the weirdness of the early 21st century and how, yeah. like, to me, like, when you listen to Kid A, 
like I call it the overture of the 21st century, like the, the paranoia and like the weirdness and the dislocation of that, of that record. You feel like it just kind of predicts like the weirdness that we're going to have in the last 20 years. Wow. But yeah. um, in, in terms of like where I would put it, I'll say that like, okay, computer for me was a record. It's like one of those sort of like paradigm changing records for me yep. like that. And I loved Radiohead from the beginning. Like I loved, Pablo Honey, when that came out, I was 15. So I've, I've, they're like Bands. the rare band that I've been with from the beginning. But, and I wow. love the band. Yeah, the Benz was great. But then, like, OK Computer was like such a, I remember hearing Airbag for the first time, like putting that on and just being so blown away. Like, I just, that record. There's nothing like it. Yeah. And that record, because of, I think, the, the time, that record came out when I was 19, which, when you hear a mind blowing record at 19, that stays yep. with you forever. <laughs> yep. Like I, yes, if I had, great point. If I had been 19 when in rainbows came out, like in rainbows would probably be my favorite Radiohead record. I was so, 19. I was 19 when nevermind came out. Okay. Well, yeah, you, I, you, I was yeah. 19 when hell of the thief came out. Oh, see, there you go. That, <laughs> I was, I mean, nevermind was big for me. Cause I had just turned 14, like 14 is a big right, age too. Sure. Um, so I would like, put, yeah. oh, I put OK Computer first for me, and then I would put Kid A after that. Like so, same. But I think, you know, the reason I wanted to write a book about Kid A is that I I just feel like if someone were to ask me like what's the what's the most important record of the last twenty years, like what's the record that kind of makes you feel like if you had to play a record for someone to explain the last twenty years of what it was like to live in the world, Kid A was just the record that came immediately to mind and. It's perfect. And again, like it yeah. came out in 99, right? The premonition, the, the oh, like, 2000. No, it's 2000. 2000 right into, oh, yeah. So right into that 99, 2000 yeah. transition. And so it's very I, similar to like Sigma Oasis, where it's like it, it, it's almost premonitions, you know, that you're hearing. It's like if you can listen to that record, it, it tells you what happens in the future. Like, how is this possible? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's so it's so wild, like on Sigma Oasis, when, when Trey's like uh, on the title track, he's like, take off your masks. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, dude, no. <laughs> Put on your mask. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, please keep on your mask. Hey, I um, mean, how, how do you guys feel about Sigma Oasis? I thought that was like a really good fish record. That's like one of my I love favorite. It. Yeah, yeah thing they've ever done. It's, it's top the best five. thing they. It's the best thing they've ever done. Wow, ever? It really is. Wow, wow. Like wow. album wise. Wow. Yeah, I, 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 I was not prepared to go above, that far I, with it. I put it above Rift. That is breaking Production, news. cohesiveness, everything. Are you kidding me? No, not at all. <laughs> that is breaking news that's, right I now. I like it. I love it. I love the take. I love it. I mean, that's a hot, hot, hot <laughs> take. So, I Steven, you, you enjoy it, too? I love the record. I mean, I would say for studio records, I would still put Billy Breeds for me. Like, yes. number one. Yeah, Billy Breeds. <laughs> that's the one. Ghost. And Rift. That's like where they kind of yeah. made like a Beatles record. Like, they were very beatle at that time. And there's so many sort of Beatlesque melodies on that record and I'm, it's a studio album wreck i mean it's a studio album it's a gorgeous and right, right. And yeah, cohesive Stu yeah steve lillywhite who i don't know why they don't work with him again they always oh go back to bob God. ezrin but steve lillywhite i think <laughs> the best producer, producer they ever had besides yeah. besides why the current you, one why are you yeah laughing? yeah yeah exactly when why are you laughing <laughs> bob ezrin, losing it. he did so much for pink floyd he did so little for fish yeah exactly ezrin <laughs> exactly so little wow. ezrin his work on the wall like he was such a pivotal part in like not only producing it but like shaping the narrative of that record right and I mean, he's, he's like rock legend yeah. he's a great it's like i hear fish people diss ezrin because of what he did to fish records and i totally understand that but it's like in the 70s man yeah floyd and like the alice cooper records he did alan parsons uh, yeah the alan parsons stuff and yeah he is like a great producer just not for fish from now, on, when, from, from now on, whenever Went drops a hot take like that, I'm dropping the NBC News, uh, uh, you know, breaking news theme song. Sigma Oasis, best fish hey, album. I'm going to use this as an opportunity, by the way, uh, Stephen. I'm Love it. Welcome. You're welcome to please hang out. I'm going to let in our second guest, though. Oh, sweet. Yeah, let's keep the party going. Goose. Is this Greg? I think this so. This is. Residing in Brooklyn, New York, he loves pebbles and marbles and is the public relations guy for Goose. So yeah, he's pretty good. It's Greg Knight. 
What's up, Greg? Hey. Welcome. How you guys Thank doing? You. Good. Oh, Thanks for calling welcome. in. Oh, of course. Yeah. Of course. You think I have better things to do during the quarantine? <laughs> <laughs> that is the only reason yes, this show has been at yes. all successful, though. But yeah, yes. you uh, if anybody has things going on, it's you, man. Goose is on fire right now, and I know you're really busy with them, and you have your own things going on. Yeah, thank uh, you, Rick. Thank you, Rick. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I've definitely been like kind of a wild, I mean, year and a half. Uh, I'm now working with Jamflow Management, so twiddle in that sphere, and uh, really like a, a band of volunteers is what I'm is what I'm aiming for, I guess. You also uh, have the best name on here that's ever been on here. Your Zoom name was, I was, will always be the best now. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to make Greggles and Marbles combined with a sugary yeah. T-shirt. Like I'm, uh, like I'm, I'm in love, and I just met you, yeah. bro. I, yeah, I was like, friend. Nelly's back there. Look at Nelly's back there. Like you, I know, I like I'm with my boys. I was like, hits, hopefully, hits and hits. yeah, like the hopefully this round room conversation has enough legs where my name will be rolling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep it rolling, hey, man. I'll talk rolling. round room. Greg, I feel like I should like formally thank you for getting me into the Troubadour. Goose show. Yeah. Thank you, Greg, for hooking I just me up. Praise in, in, in chat boxes everywhere. But no, I mean, like, just the fact that, you know, you guys were talking about the ban on time crisis is absolutely incredible. You know, it's, it's, oh, yeah. It's like just, I mean, a year and a half ago, I was like, you know, struggling to get press and, in local newspapers where you self submit. That, that was around so, the time the weekend walk interview with Goose went out. Yeah, I don't think is, I could pull that off that now. No, you know. I remember feeling like, okay, I'd never heard of Goose ever. And then it was like maybe August or so of, of 19, maybe July. And I'm yeah. hearing about Goose constantly. And it was just like, they, they just kind of blew up. And I remember going to YouTube and seeing like, oh, there's like three or four like really well shot concert videos yeah and that's like how i got into the band like there was a show um from the peach festival i think yeah and, and there was a show like maybe from like louisville or something like some street yeah. festival but it's like wow this sounds really good and yeah. i feel like i feel like obviously the band's really good but i feel like a lot of times it's hard to if, if the sound quality isn't good it can be hard to appreciate a band so like i was like wow like this band kind of came out of nowhere, but they have like all this great stuff already that you can get into. It's like, it seemed like it was a really well put together operation. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I think like a lot of that, not everything since it's been kind of a wild and ambling road with these guys, but like a lot of that can be attributed to Peter. Uh, you know, he joined the band December, 2017 and like, has a, a music business degree from NYU and I think consolidated a lot of really good work into like a cohesive product, you know? And so those soundboards, like we're, we were putting them out in 2018, uh, selling them for like a dollar a piece on Bandcamp. Uh, and when things finally kind of took off after Peach, it was like that legwork paid off. Everything was there, you know? Uh, you can go like, the way that we're going to watch this fish show tonight and uh, not, and we're relying on, on this French guy with the camera who walked in off the street. Like there's a lot of just stuff that's that exists from so, back in the day, you know? Yeah. That's so cool. Hey, oh, here's, pat, oh, I'm sorry, but I was just, and I think, I think uh, fam and I are going to make the same point just to pile on what Steven was saying. We were having a discussion in our thread earlier, how you might be the best PR guy ever. Dude. Like, no, I, no, but seriously, we, like, we flex on this show. It's a flex show where you just kind of like no, say, yeah. you know, well, you're then, cool let's thing. do it. Yeah, flex <laughs> it Honestly, yeah, so, I think, like the PR work you have done for that band is, I mean, to me, is legendary. Like, you and and listen, I don't mean to discredit the, the band, is incredible, they're phenomenal. But the, there's a there's a lot of great bands, and to for the breakthrough that they've had, you should flex away, Greggles. All right, Greggles yeah. and Marbles. <laughs> and, yeah. marbles. <laughs> and Marbles. I mean, I think it's a lot of it was it, there's so much that happened kind of synergistically for this to all work, you know. And like, I I think a lot of the work that I put in happened at the right time. But you know, to be honest, like my i've known these guys since they were in the previous band the pseudo and i knew that they were something special uh and i've seen a lot of jam bands kind of grow and then fizzle in this scene and i just i've always said that most people don't think about 
controlling their own narrative, right? And if you can really get behind that early on, uh, you know, and then not be consistently getting flamed in Facebook groups, uh, you know, you, you, ha you have like a, a little bit more control over your destiny. Uh, and I, I don't know. Who's got like, ahead of that a bit too. And it's funny because yeah. I know you represent Twiddle now and they're starting to come back from it. And I personally am an unapologetic Twiddle fan. I have like four yeah. of their posters hanging up in my house. Uh, yeah. But I know I they Frankie's. went through a they went through a phase where they fell behind that where oh yeah there was a lot of pushback and weird social media hate against them and it's weird it's funny because Goose never seemed to fall victim to that at least not yet right and yeah I mean I mean it, it, it's there right it's always <laughs> going to be there in this scene um, because people cannot handle something different coming through both ear holes but I mean yeah like I was wearing chacos at Vibes watching Twiddle in twenty. 13 like i i was there uh <laughs> oh, yeah. i wasn't working with them then you know but like uh it is what it is right you, people have their preferences uh and you can put out a really strong product i think that this scene is hyper critical in some really really good ways and some really really terrible ways right but like yeah. if you can get ahead of the curve you're ahead of the curve you know I mean, so, yeah i mean the thing i've observed is that like you look at the jam band scene there's like not actually like a lot of bands and right, right. if you look at the bands at the top they're bands that have been around i mean fish in fish's case you know over 30 years and then you have like dead and co who's like you know going back to the the 60s and it's like everyone's sort of comparing any up and coming band to these like iconic bands and it's like if you're right. not that it's like well then you're nothing and right. And yeah, I, I know. Again, like for me, like with Goose, what I love about them is like, I think they're really good, but it's also like the potential that they have as like a young band. It's like, yeah, yeah well, you know, let's, yeah. Like, let's support this band because I think they're really good now, but it's like in two or three years, they could be yeah. really good, you know, yeah, and they're so young absolutely. and they have so much energy. And it's exciting for me to like, oh, it's like a young, energetic, <laughs> exciting jam band that you can right. get behind. Right. And, you know, there's just always going to be the internet commenters who tell you that rick is not jerry as if we don't have eyes like i get it i understand, I understand well in know. some ways though you've, well, that's made, what... you've made it then though right like i we you know when we started getting kind of you know started getting hazed by the funyun and things like that we started going well we've made it now you know oh, totally. Totally. Now people yeah. are like when when you you know when you get like to a certain point where people there's a level of it's worth it to them to hate on you then you've yeah. kind of made it. You've kind of made it. <laughs> well, I think a cool thing too about like tonight's show, like uh, dinner and a movie, is like we can see fish at a very early point in their history. It's like two stage. Like, yeah, like, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, like they weren't even fish yet. Like they were really right. good, but like they were not what they were obviously going to be when they hit ninety four or ninety five. Yeah. And um, people forget that it's like it takes a while to like uh, fully come into yourself and. Oh, yeah. Do you think if they were yeah. on YouTube and, and had social media like we have now that they would have been able to develop into who they are? And like, it's an interesting I mean, question. Maybe, probably, maybe, but it's I, such a different dynamic for a band like Goose than it was for Fish. Yeah. I mean, I, again, I, you know, and I, and I love this about listening to 89 shows, but it's like, again, if, if this band just walks off the street and they have a song like You Enjoy Myself, and you have no context for that it's like what is this song it's so crazy it's like is it even a song it goes here it goes there you know like, what are they even doing and obviously the musicianship is great but it's not something that i think a lot of people are going to understand unless immediately. you broken broken italian uh, <laughs> right this, this resonates with me. it's <laughs> so easy to look back now and say like well obviously it's genius because we have the benefit yeah. of hindsight but like at the time a lot of people were probably confused by it you i know? don't know i I don't want to disagree with our guest, but I don't know if I agree with you 100% because I remember the first time I heard Divided Sky was the, my very first exposure to it. It was incredible. It was absolutely beautiful. Like with no, I, having been not at all connected to jam bands, I was like into heavy metal or whatever. Divided Sky just on its own as an isolated piece was the most beautiful like music I had ever heard at that point, right? Like the melody, right. the guitar tone. So like I get that it was super strange and all hard to adopt, but at the same time it's so significant and and beautiful on its own right that like it draws you in no matter what, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, at least it was anybody, for me. Like, was anybody in 1989 like yearning for Esther? 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, not. still not. And I agree with you. Like, yeah, I think it's. Be- I mean, I don't mean to say like it's not beautiful on its own terms. Like, if you like, I listen to those shows yeah. and like, they sound great. Like, they still like they're not where they're gonna be, but they still kind of had their essence in in '89. But I I do think though that like for the average person, it would have been probably hard to wrap your head strange. around it. And 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 I say that as a compliment to Fish because oh, I right. think. The best music sometimes is ahead of its time and it's hard to understand because like you're asking me before like what, what was i listening to in 1989 i was listening like i said to millie vanilli you know yeah. i was listening to pop music i i had no concept for understanding that kind of thing um but they were but they had so much courage to kind of be original and to go out there and and be assertive like this is what we do and we're not going to apologize for it and it obviously you know history smiled on fish for that yeah, reason yeah you know? yeah right place well, right time a little bit yeah little exactly bit. yeah and honestly they had people like greg around them in some ways that were good pr people that really yeah, kind of yeah. put them I'm in the amy. right i am amy yeah exactly <laughs> <It's> amy, amy. <laughs> <No. laughs> yeah this is you know. amy <laughs> right like they had people that had a vision they had a marketing vision they had again they had people that allowed them again what well, greg's point was so amazing because that allows goose to do the art side of it right they can right. then you know they they know that they're in good hands on the the marketing side and they can just be themselves and 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 make art you know and that's what fish had that's what goose is lucky to have with you greg like that's so important in that process to me you know. yeah hey Greg, yeah, did they, you start yeah. with goose was yeah, that like the so, first band you did this for oh my god yeah like i so well i have a kind of a weird history um jam scene has always been my like my thing uh when i was in college i was excelling at garage band and i started producing hip-hop uh and like did a bunch of production work for just like local artists around connecticut as you guys know connect I get out. Hip hop scene is huge, largely influential worldwide. <laughs> um, but like, you know, did a bunch of cool stuff in in like me and one of my artists like opened for Kendrick Lamar before Good Kid, Good Kid, Mad City, and like that kind of is how I got my feet wet in the industry. And I think it was a good starting point because hip hop's so cutthroat. So then, like, moving into the jam scene, like, there's no Shug Knight in the jam oh, scene. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. we're all having no, a like, good time. That's so, that great. <laughs> Um, I went to I went to UConn. I went to school with John Lombardi, who's uh, coach Goose's uh, road manager. And you know, I was DJing. I like, got a residency, and one night Goose's earlier project, the Pseudo, played um, on campus, and like my whole crowd was gone. Right, so I ended up shutting the bar, but shutting down the bar early and going to catch them. I knew they were going to be something special, uh, and like I used to roll around, sell merch, and like you know, whatever, try to change a broken E string. Mm-hmm. if it didn't take too long um but i just i knew that there was this gap uh and kind of what they needed to present themselves to a larger stage and also thought it would be a good f you to the people who told me i'd never do anything with an english degree uh so <laughs> started, you know, crafting some good. press releases here and there and like <laughs> um you know really just like got my feet wet following them uh matt kalinsky um one of their earlier managers and booking agents who's still with them uh really kind of helped me refine the whole product uh and as they grew i was just really in the right place so that's awesome i will say from our personal experience uh i had reached out to you about interviewing the band and i i've tried this and, and i've had a couple of interviews and things for this show right you were the most professional right on top of it kindest person in band management i'd ever spoken with and i have i'm not going to name artists or call any management teams out but mm. i have a couple do of art do it do it do it no no i, 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 I don't know because i'm still hoping to repair <laughs> some of those <laughs> subtweet there are some bands and some artists that i would love to work with and i get it like we're just a bunch of whooks we're not everybody's cup of tea but, but just shoot me a message and be is. like, hey, we're not interested. Thank you. Right. I get right. ghosted by management. You were always so timely. And like, I don't know. I really appreciate that. I think that that expertise and that professionalism throughout the band, right? From its management, its PR, the musicianship. Like, I, I really, I thought that's awesome. 
I mean, I was like, guys, we got this interview with Beacon. Look, it's gonna be sick, you know. But no, I mean, honestly, like, no, front, front back, that was right like, during the NFL team thing. It was like blew yeah. up. We got like twenty thousand hits, and then you're like, yeah, we're gonna be huge. Yeah, I mean, but seriously though, I, like, there is something to be said for the fact that like people won't even give you the time of day enough to like respond with anything that like necessitates a comma. And it's like if you just I, I think like that attention to detail, especially for bands that are just getting off the ground and some of the bands that I'm just starting to work with now, like that goes a long way, right? Like the 68 year old reporter from Wilkesbury that I get to like download Spotify to listen to the album to, you know, write a piece. Like sometimes it just takes that extra little touch and that goes uh-huh. a long way. Yeah, I'm not six. I'm not 68 years old. Okay, uh, well, and it goes beyond just a, a silly blog that has a couple hundred views. Because, like, for example, I was on the fence, like, just starting getting into Goose at that point, and I could have probably gone either way. But because of the way you treated me and that connection, be able to learn more about them, drank the Kool Aid a lot harder, and then yeah. for the next couple of years, have been turning everyone I talked to onto it. You know what I mean? And I think that's where you get that exponential growth is. The little things with a few people go a really long way. A little bit goes a long way. Jive too. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah I, How yeah, many thanks. parts of Jive are there? Okay. So I coined it years ago, the Jive Suite. Uh, there's Jive One, which originally was just Jive. Uh, well, originally it was Wiltonian Jive. Wilton is where the guys are from. Then Jive Two was written right before Moon Cabin was released. Um, Jive Lee which I, let's coin it now, let's call it kind of Lee Prize. It's just like, you know, <laughs> it's break, uh, is that, that breaking same news? Is that breaking news? I'm that's sorry. breaking. Let's oh. <laughs> that's breaking. So Lee, I mean, that's like uh, the third the third part, I guess, of the Drive trilogy. Um, yeah. I, I don't know why I'm so passionate about this, but. <laughs> it's cool, though. It's like the tube yeah. thing for, for Goose. It's the Goose's tubes. Gooses, yeah. Gooses, the goose, the goose, the goose that's always, uh, and that's like one of the great things about bands like this. I feel like the labyrinthian mythology yeah. that you can dig into that just seems endless. That's always a really fun thing. It's not if it's... everything I was saying was completely untrue. <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. Just keep, right? It's just, history now. <laughs> just keep piling the bullshit. It like it works. <laughs> so if this is eighty nine fish equivalent to goose, then that means in twenty years some nerds are going to go back and watch this recording and yeah. this is going to be like five blog posts like people are going to be all over this interview you talking about goose yeah i mean i can't even imagine what people will be communicating like then you know they'll be summarizing it in six characters holograms popping up in your living room talking right. to you and shit the rick hologram <laughs> live in front of your fireplace <laughs> We've been promised like, holograms for decades. Like Greg, like, yeah. like, like, how do you? I mean, because this is something I've been thinking about a lot. Like, how do you think live music is gonna? Like, what is that gonna look like? You know, I mean, in a year. Like bingo tour. I don't want to get political uh, at all, but like, we we if we can't get our act together nationally, then we're not gonna see any live music. You know, right? Um, I think there's there's just some clear steps we need to take to slow this whole thing down. And until we do that on a unified front, there's no way we're going to see the concerts that we want to see. You know, I have no problem saying wear a fucking mask and keep your distance. I don't care. I'll say it. I don't know why that's political. Like, why is that even political? It shouldn't be. Well, no, some people make it political, but it shouldn't be. Wear a fucking mask. Yeah. Um, So I'm sorry, COVID drink. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, oh, what, what are your guys' oh, opinions on Vampire Weekend? Are they going to become a jam band? Ooh, <laughs> we're good. We're going to will them into becoming a jam band? No, they, 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 no, they, they won't. Be so much. They want to be, though. Oxford comma. <laughs> no, I don't think they will be, but I think Ezra is very, I think, like, his love, love of that scene is genuine, but I th- also feel like he loves, like, a lot of other kinds of music where I... I, honestly, I think that his artistic temperament is very like perfectionist, where he probably wouldn't let it, it totally works. rip like that. But he wouldn't release Ground Room. <laughs> right, exactly. No, he would not yeah. do a record like that. Um, but yeah, I don't think they're ever going to full go full jam. But I think like that will be like 
something that's in their arsenal that they're interested in and 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 i don't know like i i really appreciate like him sort of bringing that into the mainstream more yeah. you know because there's like a lot of people out there who are just totally you know alien to this scene and like would never accept it at all right. so to have the him talk about scene? it yeah. yeah yeah exactly so did you see him on the uh, father of the bride tour at all yeah i did how, and like how many times <laughs> just so are, we grilling, are we grilling are we grilling steven on vampire, flexing weekend? vampire weekend oh, no, no, no. i just saw flexing once I, I saw here. okay it's funny okay. because like um a friend of mine um you know snuck s- snuck a little like what have you into the show and i got some way up. fucking too i got i got way too fucked up at that show i got more yes. fucked up at that vampire weekend show than i because normally at fish shows i don't really imbibe like the weed or like or mushrooms or anything else because like i actually kind of want to pay attention like I, i'll just drink <laughs> i'll just drink part. a lot but i was super stoned at that vampire weekend show it was i mean they were great anyway i mean they did and they did kind of jam out there more but i think it was more of like a structured type like extending songs like they have a song called sunflower for instance yeah. which yeah. On the record is about two and a half minutes, and when they played it live, it was like about eight minutes. Okay, Greg, cool okay, Greg, so okay, Greg like you dead. flex, you flex your Vampire Weekend shows, Greg. Your turn. <laughs> How many <laughs> Vampire Weekend shows have you been? To? Like negative one. I like got into, <laughs> got into got into Vampire Greg. Weekend. Um, Kid yeah. Cudi did a remix of the Vampire Weekend song, and yep. that's that's when I was a hip hop mogul. So I was, uh, was like, oh, maybe I'll check out, you know uh the background of this but no zero vampire weekend i would i was hoping you know that i'd be able to catch some vampire weekend twiddle since they're doing a few shows or we're going oh, to be doing a few shows yeah oh, uh, this year show. yeah that'd so that we could you know, so much ezra just, loves twiddle they're like they're yeah they're, yeah like, it's a, it's a thing yeah. um, so i've been twiddle, i've been yeah. saving up for it you know and okay. listening to a lot of kid cuddy and ezra's absence I i've asked, seen i've seen vampire weekend and goose you saw three shows on the vampire on the father of Steven, you got priority yeah. by the way. Yeah. If somebody tries to step on you, the guests have priority. <laughs> yeah. I was only I was just gonna say that I've seen Vampire Weekend and Goose an equal number of times. I've seen them both once. Once, okay. And because uh, Goose has not played in my part of the country yet. I happened to be in Los yeah. Angeles when they were at the Troubadour, and like I said, that was the last show that I saw in 2020, and will probably probably will be that. You know, I, I don't anticipate seeing any yeah. of the other shows, um, but I loved it. I wasn't I, there. I wasn't there, by the way. I was yeah, not, I, I, uh, I was going to say, I, I didn't like, recognize you when you came on. I was like, because yeah. there, there are a couple people from the Goose Camp, and then we went backstage yeah. after the show. Well, uh, yeah, hold on a second. I got to bring this up. Wait. It what? was my, no, no, no. I'm, I'm going to bring this up. I think Goose and the Higgs played in Los Angeles in February. Am I right about that? No, that it sound was right? Twiddle. It was Twiddle in the head. It was Twiddle in the head. It was Twiddle yeah. in the head. I, I was Goose was show. with uh, was Pigeons that playing Goose ping was pong. Pigeons. Yes, yeah. and it was yeah. on my birthday, mm-hmm. and I told oh. T Strong, who lives in L.A. with me, you have to take me to the show for my birthday, and he never called me back. That's all. I'm done now. I now I'm unbelievable. Done. I break. I I was Pigeons, say, are ba- Pigeons are Baltimore boys, Tim. Yeah. I know. I love Pigeons. I don't know. Baltimore fans. Yeah, they were really fun. Good thing to come out of Maryland, right? Best thing ever I don't know shit about like some of the most popular rock bands mm-hmm. on our bracket that everybody's asking me questions about, but I can tell you all sorts of shit about Goose and <laughs> yeah. Pigeons and Twiddle pigeons. and all these what's other the, uh, bands. What's Wait, the famous I... restaurant next to uh, the Troubadour? I can't remember the name of it right oh. now. It's oh, a famous I restaurant. On it. Yeah, we uh, what's it called? Oh, it's a uh, shit. What's Dan- it called? Dantanas. 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 Dantanas after the Goose yep. Show, and Billy Gibbons of ZZ Top. Mm, there's always like somebody in there. We went. To, we went to Dantanas it would have been before up. the Twiddle, uh, or before the Twiddle Hig Show, and Jay Leno was in there. Really? Like, oh, oh wow. yeah, there's always somebody in there. Uh, Billy Gibbons. Me. Billy Gibbons. Billy Gibbons. Didn't call me. <laughs> Billy Gibbons. Should have Sorry, Chad. I wish Billy Gibbons could have like been on stage with Goose. Do you oh, guys the guests want to uh, give us some crazy. takes on the bracket matchups? We did a little <laughs> lightning round before you guys came on, but I'm curious. Just the the four coming up tonight. I just want to totally. do. A, yeah. 
put you on the spot, make you go live. All right. Uh, we'll start. <laughs> I'll say the matchup and then we'll go Steve and then Greg each time. Oh, Sound good? Oh, no. Oh, yeah, there you are. Sorry. Somebody dropped out. All right. First up, we have Jane's Addiction versus Foo Fighters. Oh, man. Steve, you're yeah, right. It's Jane's Addiction. Like, no, no contest. I'm going Foo. I'm <laughs> Sorry, you know, I'm I'm probably the youngest, maybe one of the younger ones here. Uh yeah, but uh I'm going foo. I mean I like foo fighters. I'm no diss to them, but yeah. like nothing shocking and ritual dealo dealo habitual. I mean it's so funny because like Dave Navarro now is kind of a joke, but like at the time right. he was like he was like the Jimmy Page of the eighties. I mean he was an See, incredible yeah. guitar player. I kind of so, grew up Harry. with like hilarious Dave Navarro. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. Not, I know. Shots, Navarro. Yeah. He was like with uh, you know Carmen Electra and like yeah. the reality shows, but it's like he was I don't know he was a real musician at one time. And well, can yeah. I just say one thing on that note too? Did you know Pat Smear is sixty years old? Like I was watching this thing the other night, I, and I was like, Pat Smear is that? Like he's been around forever. And he was talking about music in the eighties, and I was like, how old is he? Well, he was in the. Rips. He was in the Germs, like that yeah. '70s punk yeah. band. So he's been around. I guess yeah. When you think about that, forever. Even forever. back then, yeah, he, he. But he was probably if he's 60 now, he was like in his he late was like 20s. 40 and then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I've been talking about a guy that's played with everybody too, like James. I, and, I mean, every he's been in everything. So. Well, Nirvana. He, maybe but he looks the same. When Nir- yeah, yeah when Kurt Cobain. <laughs> Yeah, it's incredible. When Kurt Cobain couldn't play guitar anymore, they brought in Pat Smear. You that's know, like, that's yeah. that's something. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have Public Enemy versus Nine Inch Nails. Who wants to Greg, you go first. Uh, you go? I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Public Enemy because Trent Reznor kept me up at Bonnaroo 2009, telling everyone it was his last show. Like he did, like I was every there. show. I every was there. single show was the last one, but it was. It was a good show, though. It was a great show. It was a great, it was show. A great show. It was a great show, but you know, uh, this is guy, like yeah. a. This is a Sophie's choice here, man. I don't know. It's that's, really that's hard. That's what we strive for I, you know, with the brackets. It's just to completely like, screw your head up. The thing with yeah. PE is that, like, at their peak, you know, takes a millions and uh, Fear of a Black Planet, and then uh, is that, Apocalypse. Apocalypse 91. Correct. Like, that run. But Nine Inch Nails has, like, a longer career. Uh, I'll say Public Enemy. Sure, let's let's just say Public Enemy. So I want to say like uh, out of eight, out of eight people both... on the show, I was the only one that leaned slightly to Nine Inch Nails. Well, I, it's really, I mean, it's really a question of like, do you want to take the peak over like a longer career? Because there's like nine, nine Inch Nails put out an instrumental record this year that's like really good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Right, I'll say nine inch nails. You, you oh, can talk me into it. Oh, I'll say I'll say nine inch, nine inch nails. Uh, Trent Reznor. Trent Reznor. As soon as you Oscar. said that, I was like, you know, public Greg, is Greg, great. Tell I, us maybe why. I'll go. <laughs> you had you had him convinced, and then you flipped back. Talk him I, back into it, that's Greg. A Someone one, else talk. See, you know, you know, I, 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 I can't can talk him back into it. I've been more influenced by my guy Nelly. Here, uh, I, oh, I like and that's just because of how old I am. But no, I sure. mean, I'm I, like I'm I not. That. I was never a huge Trent guy. I saw Nelly too. Uh, rock, uh, rock and Mike tour came out in a big shoe. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I, nice. I like I wasn't acutely influenced by Public Enemy. I can't say that I was. Um, you know, I'm not Radio Raheem because I'm only 31. Uh, but like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you are I, the I youngest just, guest, by the way. Oh, you were sa- you were guessing that now it's awesome. Na- yeah. Nation of Millions, awesome. Nation of Millions was the best album in 1988 period and one of the top five hip hop albums ever. Chuck Chuck Ooh. is an MC. Chuck is an MC is beyond like there. There's no other MC like Chuck. I mean, just, I want to hear the music critics' response Reznor. to Kevin. I mean. This is like a very. This is it's sort of immoral that you put these guys in the same bracket. It's just. It's, <laughs> I know. I know. It's it's I love brutal. Nine Inch Nails. It's like, there's brutal. no industrial music. Like, you like uh, ministry and Nine Inch Nails are industrial music. Like I that mean, was a whole yeah. thing. I mean, maybe. I mean, okay, rock. maybe I'll go back to Public Enemy then because yes. I because I, I will <laughs> say that I think Public Enemy culturally is more oh. important i think like if you're going to talk about because the public enemy uh, public enemy is like the clash of hip-hop like they are like you know if you're going to talk about like, the greatest hip-hop groups ever Kevin, there's Kevin no one on. better than public enemy 
Kevin. Sound of the fucking drummer. Music hit me home. Like you talk about, like you talk about take. It takes a nation of millions. That's a great record. But like for me, even like Fear of a Black Planet is like even better because Fear of a Black Planet for me, I guess because I was almost too young to know It Takes a Nation of Millions in the moment. But like Fear of a Black Planet, I turned 13 when that came out. I remember my neighbor yeah. had the public enemy like flag with like the logo, like with the dude in like the this sniper is, scope, well, which is like one is, of the best logos ever. Like the public enemy really, logo. This is really, really interesting to me because we grew up like 45 miles from each other in all white Wisconsin. And right. Public enemy, public enemy reached both of us. That's insane. Oh, yeah. Me too. Well, and KC Mo, man. And yeah. I'll tell you again, that's, I saw Kevin put me on. It is, is it goose 2.0 down there? Put me on to, um, we need to talk about that, Greg, at some point. Yeah. Too, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, put me on to this doc and, the, and somebody yeah. said it was just perfectly said. I wasn't being taught black history in school. The right black yeah. history. When yeah. I when I pl- when I when I could play Public Enemy, I learned the I, I learned some yeah. right. what was missing, and so yeah. their their cultural impact is is like unbelievable. Well, All right, and, they, to- and they they made it to such a wide range of fans. I mean, they opened for U two in ninety two. That was the first exactly time. man. Just, yeah. That was huge. All right, so, I'll I mean, change the Public like- Enemy. Yeah, All right. yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're back, baby, we're back. <laughs> Uh, I want to say I'm not going to change my 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 choices, even if I'm completely wrong. I'm just going to stick with it. <laughs> no, <laughs> of course. And I'm Nelly, a, Nelly is underrated man. too. By the way, Nelly uh, is underrated. I was going to say I, I saw Nelly on the sweatsuit tour. In, yeah, uh, and uh, which he was a little bit past his peak at that point. But the Nelly singles from like the late '90s and early 2000s, like, put on yeah. like hot in here. Like that, like Neptune's production is like. It aged it ages so well. Like it it sounds like 70s soul. Like well, that's the uh, thing. There was not like a huge Midwest influence, right? It was New York, it was the West Coast, and it was the South. There wasn't a Midwest thing. Well, right. you know what right. I mean? And that was was huge. Right. Like I didn't know shit. I'm from Connecticut and I like Dave Matthews Ben, but I was at the barbershop and they were like Country grammar is not a nursery <laughs> rhyme. That's about a drive-by shooting. And I was like, oh. <laughs> so I, I really love the nursery rhyme. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, Street sweeper, shit. baby. Yeah. Cocked ready to let yeah, it go. Yeah, that's right. That's Are right. we all forgetting that Tim McGraw all like duet that they did? Because I think that takes them down. Over yes, and over again. You. We're forgetting yeah, that, Mama. We were until we, you mentioned it. We were trying it. to, but yeah. thanks. Yeah. So. It's, like, it's like over and over again, right? Over yeah. And yes. Over again. I got, yeah. I got two more matchups. You guys want a lightning round it, you two? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, the Doors versus the Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. The Doors. Um, the Doors. The Doors. I'm, I'm going to go Chili Peppers. <laughs> um, although, you know, shout out to Jim Morrison for getting arrested in New Haven. Love it. Connecticut. <laughs> uh, I just feel like, I mean, Chili Peppers, dude. There are no brothers on earth that could fill the socks the way they did. If you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. All right. All right I want to rush because we got Dawn in the wings, but. All right. Okay. okay. I'll Pixies say Blood Sugar Sex Magic is a great record, but like that's the only Chili Peppers I really, really love. Is that right? Last so matchup is Pixies versus Weezer. 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 For sure. Weezer. All right. Definitely. I'm going to let jo- Dawn and then we'll keep this party going. All right, guys. I gotta, I gotta bounce. I gotta put my kids. Oh, I gotta put my kids to bed. Thank you so much for nice having me. Nice you, meeting you. Too. Nice yep. meeting the rest of you. I'll see you at the Troubadour, Dan Tanis, one night when we can. Yes. <laughs> Give me and Billy Gibbons. We'll do it, man. Thank you right. for coming on. Take care, guys. Thanks for having it. me. Yep. Right on, man. Check out, uh, check out, hard to handle the life and death of the Black Crows. <laughs> From the great state of Maine, she is the host of the first female-focused podcast in the community, Female Centrics on Osiris Media. Time for some tour stories with Don Jenkins. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. I was so in that guy here. Yeah, like almost uh 
Oh no, you're sideways, Don. You're Dawn. sideways, Don. All right, here we go. No, we're not. Yay! <laughs> Does that yeah. work? Oh. <laughs> Welcome. Great choice, How you guys by the doing? way, on the intro. Yeah, Good. you know, Gaiuti's been my thing for a long time, so I'm happy <laughs> to have it uh, represent me. <laughs> right on. That's awesome. Yeah, it's uh, it was awesome. It sounded really great. I got um, a Gaiuti. I uh, when's the first time you heard Gaiuti live? Let's just start off with that. If that's your song. Well, funny enough. Um, I don't know. I would have to. <laughs> I'd have to look back. Uh, definitely 1.0 somewhere. Um, but it, and and it wasn't even in 1.0 that it was my song. It became 1.0 and three. It became my song in one and uh, 3.0 because what happened was uh, when they came back, um, I had just been you know killed like you know. Uh, right, right off the bat, I'd been to, I don't know, it was like 20 something shows when I started kind of, re- I'm like, something's missing here. <laughs> and that's when I really started. I'm like, God, missing. And uh, so 2000, fall 2010. So I had already been on this, like, you know, hunt for Gaiuti. It was my thing. My crew knew about it. And uh, fall of 2010, oh, <laughs> go and I do this whole run. And, you know, that, that fall tour was, uh, I want to say it was like Providence and then, um, uh, whatever Manchester, it was a bunch of different shows. Right. But the one show I could not go to was Utica. Oh no. Yeah. I see where this, this is the guy going. Utica. This is the guy. Yeah. Utica. Oh yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. You see exactly where this is going. Yeah. So, oh no. <laughs> yeah. It's guy Utica. I oh. come back on. Yeah. So, and this is before like everything was like, you know, I mean, I, you know, it was as big as it was online, you know? So I, I get on there and, you know, so I get back to uh, Amherst and the first freaking thing I see is a patch and it's a little pig. And it's like, <laughs> go fuck yourself, Donnie. Like, <laughs> that seems so, personal. That aw. does seem personal at that, that point. That does seem really personal. Yeah. yeah it's cool. Right. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so it was finally a uh, New Year's Eve run of 2011 where uh, Gaiutica, uh, Gaiuti, no, not Gaiutica, Gaiuti made a triumphant return in my life. <laughs> so. oh. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna piss you off and tell you I got Gaiuti at my first show, but whatever, you know. Well, I actually drink. I'm sorry, that's uh, flexing. You know. There you go, it's drink. <laughs> my, my first Gaiuti was the second time they ever played it. You oh wow, you guys are just flexing way so harder than I can. <laughs> yeah, when was that, Kev? Uh Patriot Center in '94, when the girls' wow. soccer team came out during Simple for Llama. They dedicated That's, the Llama. That's, a <laughs> That's a huge flex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know what? So I switched um phones some recently, and so when I did that, my whole um helping friendly pocket, uh, helping friendly pocket, helping friendly app went out of commission so i have to like plug everything back in whatever so i so it'd be really easy for me to just sort of turn it over and try to figure out what my first guy guy uti was but it, i don't know what it was at this point <laughs> it was such a fun song such a fun song well so tell it us- is and it yeah go ahead no sorry well, well i was just gonna go tell us about female centrics because like that's been a big part of what you don't want to talk about Gaiuti a little more? Or no, well, we should talk about Gaiuti is amazing. <laughs> Believe me, I, I would love to. Um, but no, but it, it is something that I promise you, and I know when you look around this room, maybe you might not think it, but but we are we've tried really hard to like include female voices and like may, you know have as many females as we can on the lot, um, and, you know, and and to get you know, again, female voices in the community out there and to be heard. And it's so incredible to hear um, and to see your podcast, how successful it's been. Um, and yeah. again, to just to celebrate you, just cheers for you for that. Um, you. But tell us, tell Very us much. about, I just, 
your most recent um, podcast with Chris France and, 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 you know, and the talking heads and Tina Yamouth, like, I want to hear some Tina Weymouth juice. Like I yes. <laughs> like about what is happening in Tina Weymouth's world. Right. Please. Well, I will tell you from what I know of is that Tina is very, very happily married to, uh, to Chris France. So <laughs> Perfect. Because... Well, that's, I'm glad she's happy. If she's happy, then I'm happy. That's what matters. <laughs> Tina deserves yeah. to be happy. <laughs> Can I just um, say, I played Tina's bass once. Sorry, Don, to cut you off. Whoa. I played Tina's off there once. So, That's a huge um, flex. That's a huge yeah, flex. Um, before <laughs> any of, of my work in the jam scene, I was uh, managing a music school in Fairfield, Connecticut. And there was a, a girl who was a student there who lived next door to Tina. And Tina was like, oh, you're playing bass. Why don't you just borrow my bass for your lesson. So uh, that like iconic Hoffner bass, like uh, Paul McCartney style, yeah. uh, I, I played it. I played it, I played it was really it her, bad. Was it a really, her big, big, huge one? Like the one that, like the original one? Is that what you're saying? No, Stop no, making sense. no, not at all. She's more responsible than that. No, um, were you, <laughs> yeah. Greg, yeah. Greg, were you any good? Are you, I mean, did you? I can play some bass, yeah, but like, I, you know. I, we're it, starting uh, a band. Yeah, we're that's to, I mean, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna be that direct. Um, yeah, no, I can, like, I can play. So yeah, like, Chad I, plays like, keyboards. I don't know if you heard. Drink. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, some very fantastic interludes. But yeah, no, I, I played a marginal psycho killer and then handed it back to the student. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's what a great was it story. like? That's yeah. Great. What was it like, Don, talking, though, to, you know, again, to a, a member of the Talking Heads, you know, again, something that we've, we've had this discussion about the Great American Rock Band, about how far Talking Heads should go. Like, are they the Great American Rock Band? Like, what was that like meeting and talking to him? Yeah. Sure, sure. So I'll back it up for a minute and just tell you how I got into the female centrics and then I'll bounce yes, into my 50th yeah. episode. Yeah, so, yeah. That was see a, lot a of fun. You see how know. professional does this, guys? <laughs> Please help yeah. us, Don. Like, Please. We're going to ask you Take five notes, questions, plus. five questions at a time and then just answering them in whatever order you want. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. So, um, so when Tom first put out Under the Scales, when he, like his first few episodes, he said, he was like, um, you know, hey guys, if anybody has any, uh, you know, subjects, anything you want to talk about, that kind of thing, just email me. So um, I am a talker, go figure. And uh, so, and I love telling tour stories just like the rest yeah. of us do, you know? Yeah. So, and I've been on tour. So my first show was uh, July 9th of 94. And is that today? Wait a minute. Almost. When is that? No, it's the 7th today, but. Thursday. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thursday. Yeah. So last year I hit my uh, 25th anniversary show. Um, yeah. So, silver, um, silver anniversary. Silver anniversary. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, so so I sent him an email. And I said, look, I have got tour stories for days. As uh, specifically, my summer in '96 was just off the charts, and then we just had this crazy thing happen to us. I don't know, 16 for New Year's, and whatever. So. I just sent him an email and I left it at that. And that was in November when he first started that. And then it was April. All of a sudden I got an email from Tom Marshall and no, no big deal. I'm like, Oh yeah, it's cool. Yeah. No, it's like yeah. super like, yeah, <laughs> like, I try to keep it cool, whatever. Yeah. So I, um, so he's like, Hey Don, like, I love your idea. You know, if you want to email me, you know, just an example of what you're talking about. Great. Right. So I'm like, okay, cool. So finally I had a chance, like I've got three kids, a husband, job and all that kind of stuff. I kicked all their asses out. It was like a Sunday morning, uh, <laughs> took a little bit more Adderall and just fucking, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah, so, no. so just like the president of the United States, it's okay. No, oh, exactly. no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> So I cranked out my whole summer 96 uh, summer tour, plus what happened to us for the New Year's Eve. So our summer 96 tour, it was just one of those, like, you know, I turned 21 that summer, you know, it was the whole uh, getting lost, and like a big rigmarole. Sounds I'm not going to get perfect. into it right now, but yeah, perfect. yeah, you yeah. know, like what, yeah. of, what all of our stories are, even if you're 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, whatever it is when you're young and you're like, balls to wall fish, you know, and like living in your car, doing that thing, whatever. Right. So, um, but during, while I was writing that, I was like, you know, I am like, but a drop of 
what could be told here. And so when I wrote him all this, I said, you know, I'm really interested in possibly putting a book together and getting everybody's stories together and seeing what happens. So he wrote me back right away. He was like, this is awesome. Let's do this. So um, I, so that was rolling into uh, Baker's Dozen. So what I did was I wrote, um, well, I wrote one note, but I folded <laughs> I fold it. I don't know how many of you are. So I'm going to be 45 this summer. So I don't know how many of you are 1.0 kids or not, or at least in the sense the majority. of like dealt with. Yeah, Greg, yeah, yeah. So, Greg Lama and I are the only 3.0. The 3. rest 3. of them noobs. Yeah, the rest okay, of them so, are all 1.0. So the so and the only reason why I'm saying this is because I believe probably the 3.0 kids um did not pass notes when you folded them up into triangles. Oh hell at, yeah, we did school. though. Yeah, yeah, or okay, the squares okay. with the squares of the triangles. Do you, could oh, you yeah, do yeah, it yeah, right yeah. now, kid? Though, could you do it right now if I asked you to, Wook? If you could, you fold one of those notes. You know what? I'm gonna football. mute Chad. You take the lead with Dawn. <laughs> I got it. I got I'll it. report no, back wanna, in yeah, a minute. Go, go grab a piece of paper. Let's do this shit. All right. Yeah, so. I want to see if you can fold <laughs> so. one of those notes. I don't believe so it. I, I sat and I folded. 100 plus notes and I passed them all out at Baker's Dozen. I passed them out to the uh the the um uh sorry the the people who take the tickets like the, the ushers or, ushers that are like the thank you thank you thank yeah. you the ushers I pa I passed them out to everybody I started he actually put something on his I I like no that I'm like oh let me think episode seven um <laughs> you know um the fishes um jazz's fish episode he put something out there for me to start collecting stories so they started to come in and and they were great but i think you know the big the big thing is is that like all of us are are somewhat professionals or parents or something now where you really need to be careful about like i'm a teacher so like people really need to be careful about what they're saying and yeah you know yeah exactly and, and fam's so uh, fam's um, a teacher too fam's since a teacher it's, uh, too. yeah since it's uh, admit we're a teacher to, uh, moment now yeah no I'm a teacher too. <laughs> yeah, I I teacher Greg, you're you were supposed too? to keep we're that done. quiet was. chad was, oh yeah. i'm sorry I, yeah. oh, it's over now it's over it's, it's over. okay yeah right uh, you know how big goose is he was a teacher. He's not I a teacher anymore. Teacher. Exactly. Now Someday, Greg. <laughs> Someday, Greg. Don, or Don, you're still teaching? Yes, yes. I'm actually I'm a nature immersion specialist. So Ooh. my school is I work outside. So this morning I'm I'm out like 20 hours a week with uh, children in the forest, uh, teaching preschool and uh, summer camps and after school programs. Oh man, is it weird with Magical. masks? Magical. Is it weird with all the protocol, the masks and everything? How do you deal um, with that? So we had to obviously be shut down for the last few months. And then so the way we're dealing with it now is um, I had masks made so the kids could put them around their necks or on their heads. And if they become really close with it, like, you know, if they're playing like fairy houses or doing a project, whatever, they put them on. Otherwise, I mean, there's only eight of them. So we're out in the woods the whole time. We're and so and we just started. Outside. Yeah. Yes, it was our first quick? Day. Of course. Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Came right kick, back. Okay, yeah. hold on. Step Woo. two. Step two is you have to kick a field goal right into the middle of the screen. Yeah, right. you have technically to a paper football at that yep. point. Yeah. Can you do it? <laughs> I oh, not it. bad. Not bad. Good it. try. Close. In slide right. In school you have. Mention. You have until 8:30 right. Eastern. You have until 8:30 Eastern to hit that. I thought there were square notes. So I remember there were like there a way square of notes too. There were. Yeah. You could put your fingers in them. And get, oh, like, that's all. Oh, yeah. All those. But it said no, you well, like. No, but there's also the square catcher. notes that you pull. Oh, cootie them. catcher. Cootie there catcher. You go. <laughs> Sure. Cootie Wait, catcher God. or fortune teller or Wait, fortune teller. This is why we need huh. to wear masks. We gotta Where get rid of cooties. <laughs> right? Gotta get these cooties. Cootie out spray. Out We've got a cootie spray. Cootie spray. Yeah. Right? What, what America important. did I grow up? We called it mash. Mash. You, yeah, mash. Well, yeah, yeah. Mash yeah. was a yeah. thing. Yeah. This is gonna turn awesome. into a Gen X millennial dispute. We, I, feel I like. know. We <laughs> called it eight box. <laughs> All I right, so I'll bring it back in. Beauty catcher uh, wins. Yes. Professional. Yeah, yeah, Hashtag sure. professional. Thank you, Don. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling it. Um, anyway, so I passed all these things in. The stories were coming. They were great, but I was looking for, like, you know, that, like, 
I don't know, a uh, stripper that you picked up at the rest stop and you brought to the fucking fish show and then she's now your girlfriend. Like, whatever. I wanted the dirt. You, you know, needed all the to shit talk that to we all the went great through. went. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, Kevin, he's got every, uh, uh, like literally, he's story. got 10 oh. stories. Exactly wow. like that. Wow. <laughs> give me a call. Just hit yeah. me up. I'll yeah. give you whatever you need. <laughs> it sounded so creepy when he said that. I know. <laughs> I'm well, sorry. I did not mean that, that to like, be no, but that's true. I'm not I mean, let's be honest. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but so, like, these are the stories I was looking for. You know, I wanted like the like, and and so people were like nervous about it, whatever. So anyway, so like, so but this was also at the same time where Bethany Barker had just started Fish Chicks, and um, there was another project that was starting to happen as well. That whole thing went to default. I'm not even gonna get into it because it turned out to be a scam, but. It was a big, beautiful, amazing woman project that was going on. So I got back in touch with Tom and I said, look, I was like, why don't we make this? Why don't we make the episode you were going to have me on be about the women of fish? Because hello, we've been fucking making grilled cheese and taking care of the dogs and making sure your asses are out of those fucking ditches Queen. for a long time, you know? Yeah. And like digging it, like whatever it is. Right. And that's when he got back to me and he was like, hey, you know, I'm starting Osiris. I think you should be the first female fish podcaster. Bam. And I'll never forget. I'm sitting in my, I'm sitting in my kitchen. I just look at my husband. I'm like, uh, he's like, yeah. I'm like, all right, let's do it. Right? <laughs> so, at, this, at this point I have my cell phone and my mouth and my head and nothing else. And, um, but my friend, so I got back to him and my friend Ryan, who uh, my husband grew up with, is he's he's not necessarily into fish but he's a huge musician and he loves podcasting he loves being the best at everything and that's kind of how i am too like i just if i'm gonna go for it i'm gonna fucking go for it I, I want to be the best at what i'm i'm doing and try the hardest and um you know my dad was like a football coach and jim teacher and you know just like my parents biggest fan my parents were my biggest fans and all that kind of stuff right so he has all the equipment and he was like yeah let's do this and and, and that's how it started because they were also, Incredible. you know, they were like, oh, we're talking to somebody else, maybe, and this and that. And I'm like, fuck that. Like, this is like, I'm doing this. This is that's my mine. thing. Yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, great yeah. at so, it too, though. And, and mm -hmm. Osiris, especially, there's a lot of fish podcasts out there. And I find the, a couple that come to mind was your interview with Isabella Anastasio. And then, and then I forget her name, but the, the survivor from the 12 tribes. I, I don't Kate know survivor Wiseman. that the ex mm -hmm. yes. member of 12 tribes yes. there. There's been a number of episodes that you've done that have stood out in Osiris have cut through in Osiris. And when you have helping friendly and beyond the pond and under the scales and all those other podcasts to be able to cut through your own network as with these standout uh, episodes, I think is a testament to how good your show is. And I think, anyone watching who hasn't checked it out it's it's not i mean yes it is female centric right but mm -hmm. it's also just great fish podcasts like like it's 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 yeah it's a female podcast but beyond that it's just a great podcast hey uh, john, and I, I recommend it john do you think i should i should start one for you know nelly the brothers <laughs> <laughs> like we could talk about just... like how much we hate the boogie on cover <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I will say, so as far as like representing, representing like the minority within the fish, uh, within the, within the fish community, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, this, this might, so yes, last episode was with Chris Franz from the Talking Heads, but before that I actually had my first, uh, black woman or black person on my podcast and, and it's, you know, um, I don't know, maybe this past fall. I made like a collage and I put it on fish chicks. I'm an admin on fish chicks and there's 16,000 women. I'm and not a so I made like, what? <laughs> no, not you're sure. not a member. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but I made this collage and it was like, you know, two different like collages of like all the women in fish chicks that I had interviewed. And someone had brought up about that there was no people of color, you know, anybody black or, or anybody on there. And how I should be doing that. And I was trying to like navigate through that without being like, let me call somebody who is a person of color just to interview yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. And it was really like, 
I don't know, for me, it was an awkward, it was an awkward uh, position to be in because uh, from from the people, everybody I've interviewed outside of whether or not you're Trey's daughter or the Wiseman's or, you know, I mean, those those pieces, it was, you know, because I found people who were like creating art or right. made a, or whatever it was, right? So to me, it was really awkward to like, hey, uh, you know, hey, will you come on here and discuss? I couldn't quite figure that out, yeah. which... When I when I just um, interviewed um, Shawnee Robinson, we discussed this because I was like, you know, I I apologized, but she was like, you know what, like that was probably like okay, you know, she's like, I probably yeah. would have been weirded out if you were like, hey, just like let me call you and talk, you know. Right. So so now with this, which I'm grateful for, with what's happening with the protests and what's being opened right now is that this vulnerability inside of me and this uncomfortable feeling, I, I hate that it took this long for it to, for me to be able to um, work with this. Does that make well, sense? Listen, I mean, I'll come on the show. You can tell people I'm Tracy Chapman. We'll have a great chat. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Just kidding. I got a fast uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it is, it's, it's interesting though. I'm like, I guess since I'm here in a public forum, uh, I went to Mexico in 2017 uh, mm-hmm. and I met several fans of color, specifically like black fans. And they're like, we've got this group. Did you see Malcolm? We had Malcolm on a couple of weeks ago. He's talking about Mexico. No, I didn't. Oh, I didn't. Know, I, know, I know he exists, but uh, which is like <laughs> kind of well, unfortunate. I... But like, but I, I met this like bunch of fans of color, specifically a bunch of black fans. And they're like, we've got this group. Mm-hmm. We're going to invite you to this group. It's a private group. And I like never followed up. So if they're listening, I'm waiting for the invite. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> uh, they're but, not uh, greg they're not i promise they're, you they're, they're not, not listening. yeah it's a no, no, yeah no. i think we're okay. down to like yeah. two no. <laughs> no. yeah no seriously uh we'll talk offline um but no, <laughs> I, don't, no, I do think um i do think it's interesting like prior to covid i was gonna take part in the resounding echoes grow conference at nyu um, uh-huh. which, like there was a panel on, on kind of diversity in the fish scene and it was like is that with Stephanie Jenkins no that was with um, wow I shouldn't also be doing this publicly if I don't remember people's names Isaac Sloan that's okay um, okay yeah, yeah. Like Isaac cool Sloan. how many shows have you been to I'll, I'll bail you out here like it's what's my your, first uh, one what's your show count like my first one. Oh, man. Right. <laughs> no I'm, I'm approaching I'm approaching my hundredth but I'm 3.0 uh so yeah baker Um, just ruined this show as far as flexing goes though that's like a thing (laughs) anyway um but anyway i I don't know i think it's they're important conversations to have um it's like i you know it's just like really funny when people are like this is funk this is real funk like during yam and i'm like (laughs) (laughs) you think you think that uh, do you think that Fish could play a Meters album and nail it? No. Mm. I, I'd mm. like Kermit Fish. Could they nail it? I don't know. Like say, Paige say one of the season... instrumental ones, the early ones with like Sissy Strut or something. Paige doesn't season his hamburgers, and we know that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Wow. We really do. Yeah. Wow. No, if you want to, you can season it. It's no one, one, no one can do true. what the meters did. No one, yeah. no yeah, one, yeah. Kev. So come on, Kev. The I only mean, thing what? worse would have been if, if Paige had to put that burger on white bread. Well, and he is. Ooh, he house burger, oh, house yeah. burger. You can't beat a house burger. A good house burger. You cannot beat. Man, you got to dump Worcestershire <laughs> on that stuff or get out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, hey, I mean, Louis Lunch, New Haven, first hamburger in America on white bread. Is it my favorite? We'll talk next week. <laughs> <laughs> I. Um, I like Greg way more but, than the rest of you guys. I think we need to whoa, open up a spot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Figure out Dawn, whose spot Dawn he's Dawn replacing. Is a, Dawn is still in no, the No, I room. made out of the Wook Plus guys. Not, uh, you know, like, he's going to break is, a pool stick over his Chad, knee and throw it to us. Chad, that's actually a good point. I like Dawn most better than most of you, too. So. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I, I need to free up two spots. That's fine, but you just you can't do that to it. You did it. This is two weeks in a row. You've done that to a guest, I think. I think <laughs> you was did it that. last week. I don't remember, but you were like, oh, I like this person so much. And that's like, all right. I, I'm the best I would, right now. I fucking know that. It's fine. 
I am like not to make this about like a wook dumber about me, but I personally <laughs> seek out and select all of the guests. And mm -hmm. if you are asked to come on the show, that means I'm a huge fan of yours because I'm not like this is for fun, right? I'm not going to talk to somebody I can't stand. And we have had two guests we have, we have on had. right now, and and Stephen as well. Like yeah. I'm big fans of. You know, you, you've done a them. great you've done a great job at that work. I like every week gets more and more fun. I'll just say that. So both of you guys are better than Tom Marshall. I'm just gonna say that. I was, <laughs> no, Tom, yeah, Tom, Tom was a great guest. Yeah. Yeah. I love Tom. No, I, love Tom. I didn't know Tom's Greg was on. Oh, I didn't know Greg was on Twitter though, because we had exchanged emails for months. I mean, like about various projects and things, and then he commented on the bracket, and I was like. Oh shit! That's yeah. Greg. I know Greg. Hey, Greg, should we talk about it? Talk yeah, are we gonna talk about it, man? Ooh. Oh, oh, well, uh, well, we can talk about it. So well, please well, do. Here's Greg. the thing. Uh, here's the thing. So, and for, I switch. guess let's talk about it. Everyone watching, uh, I, I was doom scrolling at 4:30 a.m. the other night, uh, like looking at the brackets, and uh, I was like, "Damn! Like, why are there no more? Why aren't there more artists of color in this great American rock band contest?" One thing about me on Twitter, I'm not really on Twitter, but I like to ask a lot of questions that I don't have the answers to, but I, I <laughs> love to post. And so when you guys That's were like, Twitter. come on and, and let's talk, uh, I was like, damn, like, how am I going to like simp for Fishbone? You know, like, what am I going to do here? And, uh, you know, I, I had a busy work day today, but I was going to put together a compelling case for Hootie and the Blowfish just because I Hootie thought it was in the play in bracket. Yeah, we he had was in Hootie the play in. Yeah. Because I mean, so he was an and the band. Yeah. yeah. He is an and the, but he's not Hootie. He's but Darius. he's not. You're right. And I'm and assuming that the bracket was just rock and roll. Like, I did see it, but I, like, I didn't see all of it. Is it just rock and roll? So it's obviously not him. But there's like, a couple of Public Enemy, yeah, no, yeah, public enemy plays tonight. But where yeah. do you where do you so the, I think the two questions right? that we should we should all dive into lightning yeah. round one where do you drive draw the line around what's rock and roll two mm -hmm. can we all acknowledge that Cracked Review is the 19th best selling album in American history sold more albums than Purple Rain and David Crosby sang Wait, gang vocals on Hold My Hand Which Cracked Review by Hootie and the Blowfish. Yes. Was it? Yeah. Just an well, absolute. I know. I didn't know that, but I believe you. That's Legendary yeah. album, man. That album. Who, Darius yeah. Rucker and that that. Was Hootie. Run DMC in there? Yeah. There yes. Yeah. They, they lost. They, lost. Oh, they got knocked yeah. out. They got knocked. They actually yeah. did pretty pretty good against Aerosmith, though. It's yeah, a crime, won, though. though. They, they should have won. What was your they question? Won. Won. The Great. kings Great. of Great. rock, literally Great. the kings of rock are out yeah. of the rock and roll bracket no but but we did and i i i will give chad a lot of kudos and tim as well yeah like we, totally chad we oh. yeah because yeah, we sure you know yeah. it's a tough thing uh, to do it's fine and, yeah. no it's fine man <laughs> I your, appreciate it, but it's public fine. enemies in there run dmc is no in there. no 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 um, it's a fine. different rapper the roots, right? no no i know but i i do i like the yes there are bands in there right but i think the thing is where do we draw the line around what's rock and roll, right? Because like, do the Stooges really need to be in there above the no. Jackson Five, right? And then like, do we like, where do we draw? Chad has line? an answer. For and then that. also, how do you guys feel about being the Blowfish in general? Are my two questions. Love so me, okay, so, I'll so say I'll, that. we're gonna give this to Chad though, being <laughs> the guy who originated the bracket. I'll address the Hootie and the Blowfish thing. Uh, that was an abomination. They got left out and should not have been included in. in in the end the bracket because that's just the nickname for the band, for the band. i brought included, them right? back though by the way i was the one that waved yeah, that flag did. and you thought did. they deserved a spot and you i'm did. proud of that um, i love where stan and hootie i'm so glad you're here greg by the way yeah. because oh, we hootie, no, turned I'll stand, into a I'll hootie stand stand. Hootie. This is i stand best. hootie i stand hootie yeah. he lost stand right hootie. away though i, I brought him back yeah. and then they lost right away yeah they lost they got killed they got annihilated like it was it wasn't even close but still i'm glad we brought beat dave matthews on also on the plan probably springsteen mm, yeah. okay yeah, yeah. Like, the guy can rock a t-shirt and jeans yeah yeah um mm. as and far dave, as the, dave matthews is african-american and, and, and addressing <laughs> addressing the addressing Carter the big Buford's my yeah, favorite true. drummer of okay. all time by um, the way. i'll just sorry chat, chat, no, sorry chat, chat, thank chat, you chat, all right addressing right, right. addressing the the issue we're talking about yes like what is i wanted side? to include the Jackson Five, the Temptations, mm -hmm. the Supremes. I wanted to include, but they're all vocal groups. 
And so yeah. that was yeah. where the line. Mm. The Jacksons. Kinda... The Jacksons are a little bit of a, a technicality on that because the Jacksons were a full on. Jermaine. Tito, yeah. all of them. Tito, yeah. They didn't play instruments. Uh, yes, they oh, did. Yeah, they played instruments. Oh, Bass, they, guitar, they drums. There was the whole band. It was the Jackson Five. Was the band. By I have, Michael. have you ever watched the Jacksons on VH1 for eight <laughs> hours? Have you ever no. watched the Monkees on VH1? Do you think they're playing <laughs> no, their instruments? No. Best mini series ever was the Jacksons. It went on forever. Like, listen, here's what I'll tell you, Joe Jackson. Longer than Roots. Joe Jackson. <laughs> Joe Jackson. I guarantee you made them play their instruments um, very oh, yeah. correctly and very well in a very sad way. And they, he was an abusive man. But that's yeah. those those guys played instruments. I mean, they they might not have wanted to but they did in weird, in weird <laughs> ways sad. i mean it's sad yeah. but their whole story is just brutal but but the jacksons were at, at one time now yes by the time it was victory tour jacksons yes that was all they were just vocal group they had a backing band but when the jackson five first came out they were like a funk group i mean they were cool. like they were basically james brown like a kid version of james brown like michael jackson just did what james brown did you know go ahead llama yeah, Lama looks like he's about to burst. No, I just wanna I just wanna clarify so that way Okay. Nobody brought up the Jackson Five when we had the chance. Like that's like, true. We all overlooked it. It's not just like I it's honestly thought they I thought they were a vocal group. Well, yeah, I did. Me too. I apologize. I didn't know and, and we said no Motown as well. And we again, said no Motown. And no, I we didn't why. say no Motown. We said no vocal group. Then vocal we should have the Motown's too. backing band. As the, the funk brothers, so, no. yeah, yeah, the funk brothers. brothers, yeah, the funk brothers, yeah, the funk, funk brothers, brothers should be yeah. in there, yeah. Absolutely. Don and actually, you just, also you talked about entered. doing a Motown bracket. Yeah. Oh my God, can you hear that? That's the that's the flip of the switch. But Don and Greg, you just entered a what plus meeting over this bracket. Like honestly, yeah. like and, and Greg, <laughs> we were on forever about on. this. Like this is something we have gone back and forth on. And honestly, like the Jackson Five is something that we did kind of, you know. And and Glama makes a great point. I think what happened was again is that it goes back to what your point was: is where is the line of rock and roll? Right. Is Jackson right. is totally. the Jackson Five a rock and roll band? And that's a hard argument to make for them, you know, in some ways. But there is bands in there weirdly like hip hop bands that were almost right. weirdly I would say it was more more R and B, you exactly. know, exactly. Funk R and B, yeah, yeah. But yeah, we yeah. Included- Jackson Five was straight pop pop like, too yeah great yeah. pop because I, I guess then like you know i i don't know why i have this modest mouse gripe that i keep coming back to but like if we're going pop you know then like the backstreet boys would be in the in the bracket. you have a you right, have a exactly. mod you have a modest mouse beef because they were a young jam band in their 20s that weren't were they correctly young jam band? And they have to I play the Grateful I mean, Dead, so. Yeah, I was going to say, like, we got to keep perspective. Your first matchup against the Grateful Dead on a Wook bracket. Yeah, it's essentially not. the same as not being in the bracket at all. 3%. Yeah, 3%. That's true. That's what well, they but, get. You know, the thing is that, I mean, Modest Mouse, come on. <laughs> uh, Mar uh, played with them. Johnny Mar did play I'm, with them. I'm going to be. Years. I'm going to be honest with you. In the original bracket I wrote seven years ago, Modest Mouse was going up against Fish, only because my brother and I had an argument one night, and he was trying to argue with me. And he's a huge Fish fan, and he was trying to argue with me that Modest Mouse was a better band. And so I'm like, all right, motherfucker. They go up against each other in the first round. <laughs> see what yeah. say. You guys must have horrible Thanksgiving dinners. <laughs> oh, no, they're wonderful. They're wonderful. <laughs> Talk about fish and buttheads. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, I certainly don't have the answers. And I think that there's a big, like, there's a big component to the solo project versus that was a rock like- band. But then right. you have somebody like Santana, right? Santana. On Jovi Santana. That's Same always thing. been his band. And they were just called Santana. Mm, it's a trend out. Yeah. Goose yeah, is like Bon Jovi. My parent, my parents actually, my parents actually saw Fish open for Santana before oh, I even wow. heard of Fish. Yeah. 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 yeah, they came home one night. They were like, uh, it was like some, what was it? Summer '93, I think they did that Dude, tour. '92, summer '92. Yeah, yeah. So, and I was in high school. My parents come home. They're like, "Have you ever heard this?" I thought it was Fishbone. 
I didn't know. I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah, all these kids, <laughs> all these kids come in and they all dance like this. They, they did like the arm dance away, like all the hippies dance, you know? And and then they left. And then Santana came on. They're like, do anything. And I'm like, oh, I, don't know. I left halfway. I left halfway through Santana set myself. Oh, <laughs> dude! I love I've seen that him a thought, few times back in the uh, day, but I know he idea, started doing you know? angels all around me and talking about Jesus, and I was like, "This is weird, man. I'm out of here." Yeah, <laughs> I love Rex, it. That, I love it that they the they thought. I love it that you it was fishbone or fish, like that. You know, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 It's all coming full circle now. But I'm in a tough and, spot. Right? Fit, back to Greg's point on fishbone. What an I don't think that was Greg talking about fish. Bro. I was not Santana, trying though. to make that point. I am <laughs> all day. I was like, I can't. What about no. what about Moody. bad He's brains? Where were bad, bad brains? brains? Right, bad brains. Right. I mean, so <laughs> Chad, I love you, option. Chad. I love you with all my heart. You Jesus. guys are killing <laughs> me now. All right, I will give you. I will give you uh, the hootie argument. I will give you the Santana argument. Santana was a over, great argument too. That's a great argument. The Dave. other one he made online that I had to concede to was the Prince and the and the Revolution. Yeah, well, no, you know, I, but okay. I was. We maintain that Prince is so strong as a solo act, and that the Revolution was such a small yeah. part of his career that he fell victim to the solo act exclusion, Doesn't which was matter, a tough though, exclusion. Because- Prince in the Revolution made Purple Rain. I know. Yeah. So I know that's like, why I, yeah. I, I, I just had a convo. I just had a convo with my buddy. More albums, albums than Purple Rain. That would have been a fun Woody. fucking matchup too. <laughs> Prince versus yeah. Tom Petty. Yeah. But, I mean, if beautiful. we included him in the sub matchup, that would have been just like destroying minds. Greg, no I, I I wish I had met you two months ago because this I know that's way. what I was like, thinking. We needed that. It would have made a big difference in this. Do you guys uh, have record. Bon Jovi and the plans? Yes, Bon Jovi. We have no Bon Jovi was the, they They're got angry. their own seed. They got because, their seed made it because it was it wasn't female yeah. bands too. We were yeah. like we had to get some female bands in, so we did yeah. work on that because that's another thing. And honestly, Chad and and Tim, it's something we've talked about too. It's sadly a music industry problem. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. it's not. It's it, the problem is, is that women acts and and African American acts and, and yeah. people, uh, you know, that they have a hard time breaking through. And so when you start to go like legacy and different things like that, it's hard to right. the, the the systemic can I, things. Can I reel you guys um, back in a little? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Please, please, God, please, professional, please. professional. Please. God damn. <laughs> You're hosting the show next week, Dom. That's it. <laughs> We're so far out Only the just because I'm seeing fight. the time. No, it's okay. It's just because I'm seeing the time. And I have to, yes. I have to, yeah, 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 yeah. So I just you wanted to this. like, just touch base. On, yeah, just touch base a little bit on like, what makes a difference? Because we were kind of going into this about like the, what makes a difference between like the guys hosting the Fish Podcast versus the female. And it's something mm-hmm. I talked to RJ about is about like, how, you know, and, and just in myself is that I'm like, I'm an emotional person. I want to talk about all the feelings and all the love and all of that. And how, when our day and I were discussing about like, you know, maybe we'll talk about the same show and how I'll immediately go to the emotional piece and then eventually get to the music where they go. go very technical. You can say nerdy. Music. You can say nerdy, Don. It's yeah. okay. And, well, and RJ specifically, <laughs> well, you know his what? show is extremely technical, nerdy. I mean, yeah, HF Pod, yeah, it, yeah it's exactly. great. But it's yeah, something we is, could never do. Great. We're not smart enough to do what he does with that. But well, and and I think it's the type of thing. It's like you know, we like. I think a lot of us like we all know what what he's talking about, and it's and it's and it's great. It's a, I don't take away anything from what they're doing. It's just different because I want to talk about all the feelings. I want to know about the stories. I want to know you know mm-hmm. those sort of pieces and and where the music is is always there. It's always underlying for me. Um, so you were talking about like um, asking about you know, Isabella or Kate or Chris, like these bigger ones. And even John Rua, like, so John Rua was the guy who choreographed. That was a great episode. Yeah, yeah yes. it was a great episode. I didn't oh. even know who he was and that you exposed me. Like, he's a choreographer, right? He yeah. Hamilton. He was like, yeah, Hamilton. Yeah, Hamilton, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Hamilton. exactly. Yeah. So I, it was I like the day podcast after. more than I even realized. <laughs> <laughs> it. It's really good. Thank you. Yeah, it was like the day after New Year's that he posted something on Twitter or whatever. And it's like, I just pay attention to the details. And 
I figured that you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't go for. So Hamilton. fuck it. Go for he's a yeah, great, go for he's a great all. guy. He's super I'm I've got I'm yes. with him too. He's I wanna say one more thing. So cool. I wanna say yeah. one more thing about like what we were that. talking about. So I think that in talking about the bracket, right, and in talking about it being a music industry problem, like we can really look at this as what we're seeing nationwide, right? The music mm-hmm. industry projects what we see as people, as Americans, as consumers. So it's really not a problem with the music industry as well as, as much as it's just a pro- problem of pervasive misogyny and racism and what they yep. project on what the person who has the mic should be doing. And that's mm-hmm. the thing. You yeah, know? Mm-hmm. That's just the thing. Okay. And they shut, um, they, they shut down Chuck D because of that. Right. All of a sudden, you had Dr. Not- Dre and gangster rap instead of Chuck D and a message of empowerment. Imagine That's- how far my rap career would go right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'd be killing it right now, man. Oh, my God. You have Goose as your backing well, band. Well, like, hey, Big Outdoor Night say- 3. There's a Greg Knight freestyle. <laughs> I will say that having both of you on the show has been an honor and a privilege, and I've enjoyed your takes thoroughly. And I hope we do this again. I keep saying that we should have reoccurring guests and we haven't yet, but I think we're probably going to get to this soon. And you guys are at the top of the list. Um, is, it, is it Goose 2.0? Is it Goose 2.0? All right, yeah. Well, no, no, wrong guests. Guess. Okay. Wrong. okay. Um, it's Greg, are you, on, are you in Goose? I'm sorry. Excuse I'm, me. I'm, I'm not in Goose. I'm their He's publicist. their PR manager, publicist. That's right thank you. Thank Professional. You. Like, I love you. having professionals on. Like I said, I only play a marginal <laughs> psycho killer and not. Not up there, but no, I think, um, sure. yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's all you I could got. rock a mustache, though, by the way. You should consider, I, wait, I mean, oh. I'm doing it. Oh, I could see. Yeah, oh bam. I mean, there's a lot happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> zoom. Awesome. Uh, zoom. No, you, you, uh, all right, Chad, you go. I was going to say, thank you guys so much. Uh, yes, let's get ready for guys. the show. Let's head into the lot. Let's head from the lot into the show yeah. is what I meant to say. Thank you guys so much for having me. Yeah. No, thank you, Don. Thank thanks, you. thanks Don. Awesome. Thanks, Greg. So much. Thank you, guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Chad, right. you going to play us out or no? I, I absolutely, absolutely will. will. <laughs> Public enemy. Come on. Come on. Roll the dice. Roll the dice. <laughs> yeah. Do <laughs> <laughs> it. Oh, shit. Wait, we can't hear it, Chad. We can't? Oh, there it is. Yep, yeah, we got it. Fight the power. Bye. 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 B